Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome in Oudenaarde. It's one of the most beautiful days of the year. It's the Tour of Flanders and uh, it's a pretty nice day. It's a little bit clouded, but the sun's trying to come out. It's not very cold. It's about 16 degrees out here. We've had some showers earlier this morning, but the roads are dry at the moment for the Tour of Flanders for women. We've got 142 women on the start line here in Oudenaarde and they are about to start one of the hardest finals in racing with uh, iconic climbs like Paterberg and uh, Quaremont, Taeberg. Well, we're going to see all of them later on, but first we're going to see some uh, footage of the team presentations this morning from 10 to 11 on the Market Square here in Oudenaarde. This is the um, honor list with, of course, that magnificent solo by Anna van der Brega last year. Corinne Rivera, she is unfortunately already out of the race after a crash, so she will not be one of the possibly three riders who are going to have a second win in Flanders. But we've got four other former winners on the start list, of course, Rochelle and I will be talking about that a little bit later. This is the UCI World Tour ranking with Marta Bastianelli just 10 points ahead of Kirsten Wilf. Both riders are on the start line. Mayana Vos is a third, but she's already 115 points behind. But the winner gets 200 points in this race. So there is a possibility that Vos takes over the lead, but at the moment it looks to go between Bilt and Bastianelli. Team presentation this morning, some uh, Funny bits here by the Belgian Lotte Soudal team with a fantastic Lotte Kopecky. She's been on great form recently. There she is, the track rider. She's had a lot of uh, top five finishes and she has been fifth before in Flanders a few years back. And with her current form, of course, she wants to try to emulate that result later today. Alex Cipollini with uh, Chloe Hosking, among others. Of course, uh, Japanese superstar Eri Yonamina and Chloe Hosking. She doesn't particularly look forward to the addition of the Taeberg. This is Elisa Balsamo and you can see on her chin she had a little bit of an accident yesterday on the recon and unfortunately she had to abandon. She's got nine stitches in her chin. The lovely ladies of Movistar, two French ladies, four Spanish ladies with, of course, the French national champion, Aude Bianic. And these are the bikes being checked by the UCI Commissaires, the Volcar bikes in this case. Kirsten Viltz, yeah, she won the two most recent World Tour races, the Panne and Gent Weverham last week. Chaperoned by the magnificent uh, Lisa Breno. She feels good. She doesn't really want to tell me that she's back on top four, but she's a very, very important rider. And together, Gilt and Breno are a very dangerous duo later on if they stay together in the final. But if Wilt is going to be there in the final, chances are pretty big that Marta Bastinelli will be there as well. And it's a long finishing straight here, so it might as well be a small bunch sprint. Alena Amielusik. The uh, champion from Belarus also had to abandon. She's been on the deck twice already. We've had some crashes a little bit later. We're going to talk about that. But this is a nice team as well. Corinne Rivera, two years ago, thankfully, thanks to uh, Alan van Beek, who brought her back. She won this race, but like I said before, the American champion crashed and had to abandon. But Lucinda Brand, she was third on Wednesday in Dwarsdor, Flanders, so maybe they've got more cards to play at Sunweb. And then, of course, Bulls Dormans uh, with um, an interesting addition to the team because Jolene Dore, a mere three weeks after her crash in Drenthe, where she broke her collarbone, is back here. Of course, she did want to miss this Belgian party being the former Belgian champion and the biggest rider in Belgium. This is a strong team with Black, Diederikse, Pieters, Jip van der Bosch, Jolien Dore and uh, Christine Magirus. Another former winner there, Elisa Longo Borghini and another former winner and then I think we've seen them all. Annemiek van Vleuten, she won back in 2011 when everybody was looking at her teammate then, Marianne Vos, and she just pipped uh, Antoshina on the line. Marianne Vos, I said, yeah, she's also a former winner and she's been on grand form so far, winning Trofeo Binda. Of course, that was an uphill sprint in Cetilio. This is uh, more of a flat sprint. The winner of Dwarst door Vlaanderen, Ellen van Dijk, from the Trek Sega Fredo team. She's been a former winner here as well, doing a long solo, just struggling and fighting her way over the Quaremont and Paterberg, but winning this uh, in grand fashion. 
Shortly before 11 o'clock in Oudenaarde, where the city caller is ringing his bell, indicating that the race is on. It's a very, very long race today. 159 kilometers plus eight kilometers of neutral, making it 168 almost for the 142 riders. In the beginning, we have seen some crashes, unfortunately. We're going to see some footage of that in the little summary we have here. Yep, this is the crash on the Lange Munter with uh, Amilusik Radotic is part of this crash as well. And Corin Rivera is the main name here. She's on the deck. She's been checked out by the doctor, especially to see if she has uh, a concussion. She did, did fall on her head and then she had one of the uh, riders of the Dolcini van 18 crash over her. She was cleared to continue, but abandoned uh, shortly after this crash. Very unfortunate season so far for the American champion who won uh, three World Tour races two years back. Another crash here by three of the Bulls Dolman's riders. Yip van der Bos is the rider on the deck there. Then Amelie Diedrichsen, the Danish champion, and Chantal Black was part of this as well, just as Jessica Allen, who has been crashing a lot lately, unfortunately, as well. For Yip van der Bos, this means race is over. She has a kind of a breakthrough season uh, with her win in Samain early February, but um, yeah, this doesn't look good. It's not Chantal Black. This is Chantal Black. She can continue, but Yip van der Bos unfortunately cannot. And there's uh, an image of uh, Jessica Allen crashing again, just like last week. Such bad fortune for the Australian Mitchell and Scott rider. And then we have um, the parkour. I said 159 kilometers. It's really, 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 really far. That's the maximum for women's world tour racing is 160, so we're in the 800 meters short of that maximum. We've got some cobbles in the beginning, and then some cobbled climbs, which are the worst of them all. With of course the muur, and now coming up Canadiberg, Taienberg. The combination of Kruisberg and Hotel, the place where Anna van der Weeg attacked last year, and then the horrible, horrible duo of Oude Kwaarom and Paterberg. And when we're on Paterberg, we're about um, um, 13k out from the finish line. These are some recorded images of the Muur, which we did about well, five minutes back, and um, Rochelle Gilmore, welcome. Welcome. Yes, a very how, exciting day today. How hard is this? You've been doing this for Yes, yeah, so I've done this, I've raced it, I've ridden over it many times and it is a real killer. There's a section in the middle there that we just saw that is just so steep and just being on the cobbles and trying to keep momentum. You can see the riders had already raced quite a distance before they hit uh, the, the camel, so they've tired legs and you can ju just see that it's actually quite hard just to get up the climb and anyone that's had the experience of riding it will know that, that in a race situation you've already got tired legs so here's some pictures of the peloton so you can get a little bit of an idea of which riders are feeling okay we now see amy peters at the front which is a good sign because we've seen her down the back um, not looking so good earlier on in the race today uh, she's the rider that I called for today, uh, Rochelle, so I hope I did not jinx her. Well, <laughs> she's at the front when it counts, when it comes to the climb, so she's giving herself every opportunity, and that's the thing about this race. Positioning is so important. You've got to be able to climb and descend and ride a crosswind, and all of the aspects of being a good cyclist come into one play here at the Ronde van Vlander, and so you have to have a lot of all-round skills to be at the finish of this race, and positioning is very important. Amy Peters, your pick for the day, day, Jose, so let's see in the end, uh, she's at the front now for the Bulls Dolman's team. There were five races in and we haven't had a winner for Bulls Dolman's just yet. If you look back at the World Tour, Annemiek van Vloten did it for Mitchelton Scott in Strade Bianche, Bastianelli for Virtue in Drenthe, Vos for CC Liff in Binda, and then twice Kirsten Wild built for WNC Rota. So, do you think there's a little bit of stress already at the Bulls Dolman's team? They are, of course, the super team of women's racing, and they haven't had a world to win just yet. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, they've dominated the last couple of seasons in fine style. Every race that they went into, they were able to control, and they come into Ronde van Vlaanderen without having a race win at a world tour level, so it must be very frustrating. I'm sure the pressure's on. They've already lost one of their strong riders in um, Yip Vandenbos earlier in the race today, a very heavy crash, so she has good form. 
form. So it's uh, it's disappointing for them. So that'll be playing on their minds as well. And what we've seen in the past with this race is how important it is to have numbers towards the end of the race. Yeah, you had some interesting statistics about that. Yeah, the last five years, four times we've had the winner on the podium with a teammate also on the podium. So that just goes to show that your chances of winning this race are really obviously a lot higher if you come into the last 20 or 30 kilometers with two of your teammates at least. And as I said, we've seen past winners, four out of the five past years, two from the same team on the podium. So at the Tour of Flanders, it's so important to have strength in numbers at the end of the bike race. I'm going to give some uh, credit to the riders who are on the attack. They started this attack about 40, 45 kilometers back. Um, Italians, French and Dutch riders. This is uh, Sanguinetti, Chanel Astauk for the high-tech team. We've got uh, Severin Ero for the Dolcini van Eighteen, the smaller Belgian team, former world champion Severin Ero. Kylie Waterhuis for Healthmate, Sanguinetti for Valkar and trying to come back are two riders. Uh, for Serveto, it's uh, Xenia Dobrinina. She was already on the attack in uh, Dwarstel Vlaanderen on Wednesday. And also coming back for Big Pink is uh, the Italian veteran, with all due respect, Silvia Falsecchi. This means we are um, one rider short. The break was originally composed of seven riders, and the seventh rider was the young Giulia Marchesini for the Italian Arum Italia Basso Vaiano team. So she got dropped on the move, but these girls, they still have a lead of 142 on the peloton. But, Rochelle, if we look at the course, there's still some, uh, some pretty horrible things to come. Absolutely. It's not such a handy lead at this point of the race, but they did go out to 3 minutes 30. And these riders, I mean, every rider dreams of winning Ronde van Vlaanderen. It's one of the biggest one-day races, apart from the World Championships and the Olympics. That's the race that riders want to say they have won in their career. It's, uh, so these riders are just taking their chance and I think the longer distances has allowed an early breakaway to go out a little bit further than it would if it was a, a shorter race. But today the peloton very relaxed to let this group go. No really big names there. Silvia Valsecchi probably the most experienced at 36 years of age and she has been struggling off and on the back but just pacing herself and she's a strong time trial rider. But they'll just ride now as hard as they can. You can see they're already quite tired so the race is really back in the main peloton. Well we're 100k in. Yeah, and as you said earlier, it is um, on the long, longer side for women's racing, with the, uh, the limit being 160 kilometres. They're racing 159 plus the uh, 8 kilometres neutral that you mentioned, which makes it so important because a lot of riders don't race over these distances. And to be honest, I don't think many of the athletes in the peloton train so often over 160 kilometres. So very much on the long side, which means they need to fuel themselves really well today. That's very important. We have uh, the image of uh, Julia Marquez. Sini was in the uh, break originally, now being caught by the peloton. Some nice presence there by the CCC lift team, by the two tall, tall Dutch women, women uh, Evie Kuipers, Shana Cordova. Evie told me a very interesting story this morning. She wrote this uh, race once before, and um, though she didn't write the entire course, she did finish because uh, well, she was out of the race and um, well, skipped the Kwaadermond, for example, but tried to make her way back to Oudenaarde following the arrows. And then she crossed the finish line still with her transponder on the bike and she got classified despite not having done the entire race. But she was pretty excited. She is the uh, Dutch non-elite uh, champion. So they race a combined uh, Dutch championships with riders who have a contract with an elite team and riders who don't. And because of that, performance that she did last June uh, she got a contract with and we are on the boss's team and she's doing pretty well and it's very well suited for these kind of races being so tall and being so strong. Well it's really exciting to see Mariana Voss in top form again and really talking up this uh, Tour of Flanders she wants it so much one of the former winners that is in this race so she can make history along with Judith Art and Maria Malpas both two riders in the past who have won twice Ronda Van Vlaanderen and, and Mariana Voss, I mean, if she did that today, it would be something really, really special. And one of the most experienced riders in the peloton and experience goes a long way in a race like this. Yeah, she won it back in uh, 2013, Mariana Voss, the Tour of Flanders, and that was a time that Mariana Voss basically won everything, all World Tour races. And this, in 2013, was the one race that she was missing on her impressive list of results. And uh, she won it in 2013 and six years on, she is uh, still well on top form or back on top form because of course she's been out with uh, with injury being overreached 
which meant that her body just uh, did not recover anymore. She could do the uh, training, but her body would not recover from that. It's called overreaching. And uh, it took her a long time. It took her a long time mentally as well to get over that. Because if you have been a cyclist all of your life, and all of a sudden you cannot ride anymore, then you have to find out who am I without the bike. And that was a struggle that Mayana Voss has been quite open about. That, that, that was kind of a mental struggle for her. But she learned to listen to her body pretty well now. It's the same thing that former cyclocross world champion Talita de Jong struggles with. And she listened, she, she learned that lesson and she's now back. And it's, it's really good to see, because we had this discussion last week, uh, Rochelle in Gendeverhem, that riders in their 30s are doing fantastic at the moment. Something I find very special about Mariana Voss is she's won nearly every single race you could dream of winning, but as she gets older, obviously you learn more about your body and you get that experience of how much you can deal with, with training and your workload and everything like that, managing injuries and illnesses. But Mariana Voss is just so passionate about cycling. She loves it so much. Uh, so if you're, I mean, your body can allow you to go to, um, I think a higher level, you know, from your 30s to your 40s. But Mariana Voss also has that passion, and that's what sometimes is missing with uh, riders that are in elite sport for a long time. But Mariana Voss is something very special. She's got so much talent, and she still absolutely loves every aspect of cycling. So I think on current form, the only person in this peloton that may be stronger than her physically might be Annemiek van Vluch. Who is uh, four or five years her senior. Yeah, so... But, yeah, van Vluch, and she only came into the sport um, age 24 25 so the career of van bluten is only what 12 years she started football and then uh, having some trouble with uh, with her knees started picking up cycling and if you look at the statistics of annemiek van vluten those are the most impressive of the entire peloton here because she finished eight times in the top 10 and she won this rate eight years ago in 2011 when she was still um, well in the early stages of her career so if you look at the statistics She's impressive. Absolutely. So the favourites that are on the start line today, we have Annemiek van Wooten, riding for Mitchelton Scott, the Australian team. Um, probably a standout in terms of condition, um, current condition. Mariana Voss really wants to win this. She's got some strong support in Ashley Norman Passio. Other potential winners, uh, former winner Elisa Longo Borghini. She has the strength of Alan Van Dyke, or perhaps the other way around. The duo works really, really well together. So Bowles Dolmans, Amy Peters, Chantel Black, that duo there. Um, Lisa Brennawatt and Kirsten Wild from the another duo. Another and you, duo. You said before, Rochelle, it's important to have a teammate in the final, and you're just mentioning some very dangerous duos. If you look at uh, Van Dijk and Longo Borghini, the Trek Segafredo duo, there was some, some fear this morning at the start when I spoke to some riders that uh, Trek Segafredo was going to try a two pronged attack. If Van Dijk didn't get away, they're going to try Longo Borghini. And Van Dijk tried, and she tried pretty early in Oslo Flamer on Wednesday, 16k out from the finish line, and she went full time trial mode. And I think she might try that again today, and if there's one other rider who can go full time trial mode from the Paterberg, it's Annemiek van Vloten. Yeah, and then one other rider that doesn't have a really strong duo that could win today is Marta Bastinelli. She's in the form of her life. She really is in good condition. She's been out training a couple of days ago over these bergs, just flying over them. She rides for the Virtue team. Um, the owner, Bjorn Reese, is uh, here today. Mm. He's in the car, so that will give that added motivation or added pressure. It could go either way, having the big boss uh, following in the car. So that little move we just saw from the FDG rider was Shara Gillow from Australia, just pushing the pace there. They've still got to catch that breakaway. Two minutes ahead of them, but the, uh, as we said, a lot of really hard racing to come just yet. It's a very interesting place to uh, to attack or just to, uh, to up the tempo because we just passed the feed zone and um, we're now going towards one of the other provinces in Belgium. We basically ride through Eastern Flanders, which is a province, Oost Flanders, and then just one little detour through the uh, French-speaking part of Belgium, Henegouwe, in Ook. And there's not a lot happening there if you look at the course, and especially at this place, they try to force something, which yeah. I find remarkable. Well, the thing is that it's um, the climbs are the scary part for a lot of riders, that they focus and concentrate so much on it. But we've seen so many times in the Ronde van Vlander and the move of the day is normally made between the climbs, over the top, on the descents, in those moments where everybody's like, okay, I ticked that box, I got over that, and they relax, Oof. and then bang, 
one of the attacks goes and that can be often the one that sticks so in this race especially from now until the finish the riders can't really afford to hesitate and we were speaking earlier about uh, Emma Johansson one of the world's best cyclists in her time and never won at the Tour of Flanders and she said the reason was she was too concerned about the other riders and who was going to chase and that she needed to race a little bit more on instinct so I think from this part of the race they've already raced a long distance but they need to be so focused mentally and race a little bit on instinct when the moment's right and not let the wrong uh, you know combinations go up there always a little crash at the feed there uh, touching wheels well somebody touched Chantal Black's rear wheel looked like one of the Movistar riders and this is a very interesting all the way at the front of your screen on the right you see a rider who was part of the very first Tour of Flanders back in 2004 look at this uh, Movistar team it looked like a little mishap in the uh, in the feed zone of course those bags they can be quite dangerous getting in your wheel and here we see again yeah she's looking yeah and then she touched wheels oh it's pretty amazing that black stayed up right that was uh, Shella Gutierrez who uh, got a top five in the Trust of Flamer race on Wednesday and uh, this is her teammate Roxane Fournier the French rider who's a pretty good sprinter as well so this is not good for Movistar. Well, yeah, Guterres uh, from Movistar would have been one of the outside chances I had on my list today. But uh, for number one, Chantel Black, she got a pretty hard hit to the rear derailleur there, which is uh, something that can cost you the race. Uh, she held very steady and uh, she didn't wobble at all, but her uh, rear derailleur did get a hit from that front wheel of the Movistar rider. So let's hope her bike is okay. No doubt she'll be putting her hand up to get some checking and uh, assistance from the team car. So you can see at this point of the race, it, it is the point in the race where they have no categorised obstacles and they relax a little bit, they take their feed, but it can be in moments like this where a, a break goes away. Um, Trixie Warak, um, who is at the front here, was part of the very, very first Tour of Flanders, a whopping 15 years back in 2004. And um, it was the year 2004 that Zubirova won and Trixie Warak got second. 15 years on, she's still here. That's just one amazing bike rider. The small rider in the middle of the screen there from Trek Sega Fredo, Trixie Warwick. I would nearly go as far as saying she is the most experienced rider in this peloton and she's a fantastic team leader and team captain. Uh, she's come back from an injury where she had a very bad crash and actually lost a kidney um, from having a, a bit graphic, a, a stomach um, cut. So. That was, that was actually one of the two times that she missed a race because she crashed in Trofeo Binda in March and missed the Tour of Flanders in 2016. And the other Tour of Flanders she missed was 2008. So she's been a part of this peloton now for uh, 14 Tour of Flanders. Well, you can see <laughs> she's doing her job as she always does there, just protecting Elisa Longo Borghini, one of your former winners that's in top condition as well, will be wanting to try and win again for the second time but she also has teammate Ellen Van Dyke who could potentially win here we're looking at the WNT riders all lined out there they have Kirsten Will and Lisa Brenner and the Belgian champion also sitting comfortably in there we see Lotta Lepisto the Finnish champion can she make it to the finish as a sprinter that's the big question how hard are they going to race the final of this year's Ronde van Vlaanderen they're a little bit scared that it's a bit tougher in the final than it has been in the past because they've thrown in a couple more climbs um, significantly the Tainberg difficult climb and, and that's what's worrying everybody the bubbles. combination bubbles, bubbles and climbs bubbles. And there's not much time to recover between that uh, the next four climbs that come up. But this is the thing about the Pisto. Why is she riding all the way at the front, her head in the wind again? It's, it's a thing that she's been doing for years and years, and she should by now have a little bit more faith in her sprint. Well, it'll be interesting to see if she's actually saving anything for the sprint today or if she's purely on domestique role for her teammates. Um, we saw that she's um, just having a look around there at the front of the peloton. So we're seeing a moment in the race here where we said there's no categorized obstacles, climbs, or anything like that, but they are approaching a very difficult four climbs coming up. La Hoop comes up first, which is not a categorized climb, but uh, I can tell you from experience a couple of days ago that it is quite significant, especially at this point of the race. And the Canaryberg, the Tainberg, and another uncategorized climb, which is cobbled, the Steenbeek Thrice. So there's quite a few consecutive climbs there. And it's also the um, 
the part of the race where we are now that we have to factor in. If you look, for example, at a race like Dwarst of Vlaanderen, which would have finished by now, that was 110 kilometers on Wednesday. And now we still have got an entire final to play. So Nepa coming to the front. Of course, they uh, already lost their uh, sprinter, Corin Rivera, but Corin has not been on her best this year. What, what, what is the reason you think that she, well, she had a just had a near miss all the time? Phenomenal season in 2017, the year that she won the Ronde van Vlaanderen. And she, for a lot of people, she came out of nowhere. Um, but she, she won, had already won over 20 US national championships. But she came over to Europe in 2017 and absolutely took the peloton uh, by storm. She won the Tour of Flanders and a lot of other races in that year. Then she struggled in 2018 just mentally with the expectations of her team. And, and that can happen after a very strong year, obviously. Um, rising to the top so quickly she said she struggled through 2018 just trying to find her feet now in 2019 but um had a pretty disappointing start to the season a lot of setbacks and crashes and uh today already crashed out of the race so that was a uh, quite disappointing we've had a few riders already drop out of today's race but it is a race that things just happen it's um full on it's very close racing very technical roads right and lefts narrow roads so you do need to be focused we saw a little glimpse there of your new daughter. Just uh, like I said in my intro, a mere three weeks after her horror crash in the Acht van Westerveld, which is uh, the race before the Ronde van Drenthe. And she was riding the Van Berg, which is the uh, man-made landfill um, climb in the north of the Netherlands. She was actually picked up by the wind, which was a, a horrible wind force, gale force wind. Um, she was picked up and smashed back on the tarmac and she broke her collarbone. Three weeks later, she's back here and she said one of the reasons that she is riding is that she knows these roads and that she can be of use to her teammates because of her knowledge of the course. Well, the peloton, this is the lead break that we're seeing again here. One minute 34 in front of the peloton. No big favourites in this breakaway but they are working well together and they want to try and stay away as long as possible i don't think the peloton has underestimated any of these riders i think it will come back together but one minute and 28 seconds advantage for these lead riders bottle here for chanela stauchje by uh, the uh, female sports director of high uh, high tech Tone lima also a former rider herself chanela stauchje is still a pretty young rider uh, just like her compatriot from the healthmate team, uh, Kylie Vateros. Both riders were, um, well, top junior riders back in the day when they were um, riding in the Netherlands. And they both have had a little bit of trouble making that step up to the elite level. Kylie Vateros still under 23. She's still pretty young. She hopes to make that step here, uh, riding for this Belgian team, getting the chances to ride World Tour races. But Rochelle, what makes it so incredibly hard for top junior riders when they come into the elite ranks? Well, the distances for one, I guess um, the increasing distances in women's cycling these days is a real challenge for the younger riders, but the size of the peloton, and I think the aggressiveness, um, positioning in pelotons, it's a, a different game to in the junior ranks, so it just takes a little while to get used to, you know, and know the riders to follow and where to be, because if you're behind the wrong wheels, especially in a race like this, it's very difficult, which leads us back to um, just seeing Pytech products with the car there. In women's cycling, there's only one follow car, which means that if you're lead rider is back in the peloton which has obviously um, probably the best chances not in the breakaway but the team cars have to be up behind the breakaway which leaves the lead riders in the peloton without support vehicles so it is a race that uh, you could win or lose simply due to a, a crash and crash a mishap um, punches and even getting feeding is very difficult on a race like this so one team car per team here at the Ronde van Blanderen in women's cycling which is weird because men's team are only one men bigger yeah they ride, ride with seven riders and women ride with six we saw that uh, Dutch woman Chanela Stauchje was swinging her arm just a little bit she had surgery on both of her shoulders in uh, most recent years which also explains a little bit that she has not reached that top level just yet so it's really great for her and uh, the small Norwegian team of high-tech that she's part of this breakaway 
And the funny thing is, Rochelle, since the distances are now longer, the racing is now also starting to mimic the men's racing with a big breakaway up the road for a large portion of the race. Yeah, definitely because of today's distance um, being a little bit longer, they've let this breakaway go out and they're very relaxed about it. The peloton seem to have it completely under control and uh, I kind of like the dynamics of uh, the shorter races. Oh, we see a crash. It's a Trek Sega Fredo rider. This could be a major one, not this looks like Ellen Van Dijk. This is going to be a massive blow for the Trek Segafredo team, one of the favourites. Is it? No, it's Cordon one. Rago. Cordon Rago, so a, a very important domestique for the team. This is not good. She's been in fine form and she would have been a major player coming into these consecutive climbs. So very disappointing for the Trek Segafredo team. She actually won that race that I was talking about where uh, Yolene Dora was uh, picked up by the wind. It was her first win in years. She's been on great form. She's a very happy rider. And there she went with, I think it's former Canadian champion, Lea Kirchmann from the Sunweb team, who was also part of this crash on this traffic island. Uh, and there is a marshal there, but are they crashing into the marshal maybe? Let's see what happens here. Oh. It's interesting. It just looked like she lost a bit of traction on the front wheel there. Um, we only saw the replay once, but that uh, would be, you can see Trek Segafredo on the right of your screen now. That's Lotta Lapisto with Trixie Warwick behind her, Elisa Longo Borghini. The tall rider for the Mitchelton Scott team is uh, Dutch rider Monique Tenneglo. And she is uh, one of the chaperones for Annemiek van Vleuten, winner of uh, Strade Bianchi. Roche Mackay also at the front there in the Sunweb jersey, the red jersey. Leanna Lippert, the German champion from the Sunweb team as well. Most big teams are now moving forward. Of course, uh, the Trek Segafredo team uh, have heard about the crash of Cordon Rago, but it looks uh, pretty obvious to me that the team are definitely not playing the card of Lotte Lepisto for a sprint because she's working she at the moment working. at the front. And uh, they've got Ruth Winder in there as well, um, always tucked in behind Elisa Longo Borghini. And then on the other side of the uh, peloton is Alan Van Dyke. So they've got all five riders without Audrey Cordon Rago at the front. Interestingly, we just saw it at the front of the peloton, and we've seen it a couple of times already today. The WNT team of Kirsten Weald and Lisa Brenner. Kirsten Weald looks very, very comfortable. The winner of the last two World Tour races. Do you think that she can make it three in a row? Well, it would be amazing. She's been on the podium so many times here at the Ronde van Vlaanderen, and she's talked down her chances today, and it would be great to see her pay Lisa Brenner back by supporting her right until the finish. But Kirsten Weald, I mean, we've seen on the, uh, the former winners, Ina Yoko Tutenberg, who's the director for Trek Segafredo today, she has won this race, so why not Kirsten Weald? I think she's got the potential. She said she's very tired after a long track season where she won two world championships again, 2019 already this year two world tour races she's feeling really um deserving of an up and coming break which she will do after the uh, healthy aging tour which starts on wednesday in uh, the north of the netherlands which is a uh, typical dutch racing by the way with wind and uh, more wind and uh, more wind and you can catch that live online as well it's just a great thing that there's so many live women's racing all over the world We've, i've seen some viewers on my twitter feed from uh, from Melbourne, from uh, the USA, from Belgium. Just check in with Rochelle and me on Twitter if you're watching. And if you have some uh, very urgent questions, you might contact us as well. Maybe we can help you with some uh, race tactics. One minute seven for the riders as we enter the province of Henegouwen, or Heno, as they say in French, because this is a French-speaking province. As you might know, Belgium is uh, a country where they have two languages, basically free because at the eastern part of the country there's a small part where they have um, German as their official language but we're now entering the uh, French speaking part of the country which is uh, if you look at the map uh, the south eastern part Brussels is bilingual it's a, it's a big big point of discussion in Belgium and uh, of course uh, being the nation's capital it's um, it's bilingual but the racing is mostly purely a, a Flemish thing. If you look at the peloton, there's hardly any riders from the French-speaking part of Belgium, Wallonie, both in the men's and the women's peloton, because the racing is, it's a Flemish thing, just like cyclocross is a Flemish thing. 
We're just getting a look at all the teams now moving to the front. Mitchelton Scott working very hard, always at the front of the peloton. They've got one of the strongest or the strongest at the moment rider in the race in Annemiek Van Vluten. But what about the chances for Amanda Spratt? I personally think this course is very, very well suited to Amanda Spratt. She's got the condition. Will we saw a tweet from Amanda Spratt saying she was heading to Belgium to support the team, and I thought that might have been a little bit maybe trying to throw cautious. people off. A bit cautious, maybe? Because I think she should get the support of Annemiek van Vluten today. Um, she's tirelessly works for Annemiek. Last year we saw her at the Giro d'Italia, and she's in the form to potentially win this race. So I think it would be great to see Annemiek van Vluten support Amanda Spratt and see what she can do with a bit of team support. Gracie Elvin also been in the podium, on the podium here at Ronda van Vlaanderen. So a strong team. They've got the experience there and they could be one of the main players at the end of this race. If you look at the results of Amanda Spratt, her best result was uh, three years ago, 2016, when she was uh, 15th. So I'm going to wait and see what happens there. This is uh, a little bit of uh, a problem for Silvia Falsecchi. She is uh, one of the uh, riders of the uh, Italian Team Pursuit team, where she is, uh, of course, the most experienced rider riding alongside uh, Elisa Balsam or Letizia Paternostra, for example, who uh, was third last week. She's not here this week, but uh, she got an amazing third place last week in Genveve and one of those up-and-coming riders from Italy. Interesting to see how they're panned across the road here. It's one of those sections that are not categorized climbs, but it can be where we will see the peloton come across and maybe they can do some damage and split this up. So team directors sitting back in the car are often watching a live stream of this. And if they can see that the breakaway is breaking up here, they know it could be a great point to actually upset the peloton. Is this the kind of knowledge that also gets across to the team managers? Of course, it's on live television, also in Belgium, so people can watch this in the team car. So a lot of team managers will see an opportunity here to try to make it a heart race and spell us on a little bit. Absolutely, and it's, uh, it's quite often um, now that they put the director in the passenger seat and have a different driver, just so the, uh, the director can have communication from people outside of the race and the mechanics always looking at the live stream. So our breakaway is now uh, down to five riders. Former junior time trial champion Severin Ero is leading uh, the, the, the pack at the moment. You can see that some teams are coming to the front. Bulls Dolmans here with uh, their three national champions. They see the opportunity and they now get into these open parts. Also Bigler are making their way up to the front. Trek Segafredo, everybody sees that this is a dangerous part, that there might be an opportunity here to split the pack. This is, this is prime territory for echelons. Yeah, I think we could see some action quite soon. Uh, like we said, a lot of riders are anticipating the approach to these four consecutive climbs coming up, but this could be a moment where the team takes advantage of uh, riders just staying a little bit relaxed. All the big teams together at the front. Bowles Dolman on the right of your screen, you've got Trek Segafredo, Annemiek Van Vluten just there on the left, trying to move up. One of your big favourites for today. Bastianelli on her wheel. And uh, also the Park Hotel Valkenburg team with in third position, Sophie de Faust. She's been on grand form so far, had a top 10 as well in Dwarstel Vlaanderen. Two years ago, she had a horrific accident. She broke her pelvis, she broke ribs. She was in a very, very bad state, but she made a recovery. Oof, another crash happening here. One of the riders for the uh, WNT rotor team. It's the Spanish rider, Sante Esteban. She was called up because Claudio, Claudia Cost Coster crashed last week looks like Julie Lett is also there 195 for the Tipco uh, for the uh, Aromitalia team is uh, Balducci got a top 10 place last week in, um, in Gent Wevelgem getting a wheel from uh, former pro rider Simono Antonini and here's some problems with uh, one of the Bigler riders can't see her face nor her number but it looks like Julie Lett Trouble here for uh, 194, Letizia Borghesi. Uh, looks like she has to get a spare bike. Cause... Oh. Race goes on. Oh, this is interesting. LA Cipollini's Chloe Hosking doing domestique duties at the front of the peloton. She's obviously made a call that she won't be looking after herself to see how far she can go into today's race. So racing in a support role, which is... 
for me, a little bit sad because I would have loved to see how far Chloe could go into this race. And if there's any chance on that long run into the finish where little groups can come back, Chloe Hosking, I think in her career, could definitely be a potential Ronda Van Vlander and winner. This morning, she expressed a little bit of worry uh, because of the addition of the tyre better. She did not particularly look forward to that because it was cobbled and it was steep. And she said to me that she did expect that the final was going to be different than uh, than previous years because of the addition of that climb. Last year we did another climb called the Pottelberg, which is not cobbled, and this year we have the Tyenberg, which is a cobbled climb. So that makes a little bit of a difference. It's smaller, it's more narrow, so the positioning is uh, even more important than on a wide road like this one. Well, this is uh, interesting. Mitchell and Scott, they often ride aggressive like this. And as we said, with the strongest riders in this race, Annemiek Van Vluten and Amanda Spratt, they will want to make this race as hard as possible to get rid of some of those pure sprinters like Marta Bastinelli, uh, Kirsten Wills, who will be hanging on as well. And here's the breakaway. They're still doing it tough out there, 53 seconds, but they've had a, a long time out there in the wind just sharing the work around. Let's mention their names again because they're doing a very valiant effort today. Uh, Sanguinetti, Severin Ero, Kylie Waterhuis, Chanella Stauchje, and Xenia Dobrenina was also in the breakaway on Wednesday in Brussels, Vlaanderen. Three women breakaway back then. So she's showing again. This is Falsecki being caught by the peloton, led by uh, Julia Souk, the Sunweb team, followed by Kirchman, Sunde Brandt, Lippert. Those are the riders for uh, Sunweb. There is uh, Kristen Bildt also at the front of the race as we pass through uh, the feed zone for the men's race. So it's not the feed zone for the women's race. We're 50k out, which means that um, we are approaching the final five climbs, starting with Kanariberg. And if you look at the Kanariberg, it's a uh, 1,000 meter, starts in about 4k out, 14% um, maximum and 7.7. Uh, Average, so that is why the peloton is getting nervous at the moment because uh, we're approaching Canariberg, and uh, just before that, there's another uncategorized climb, Rochelle. Yeah, La Hoop. It's one that they haven't uh, categorized, but it certainly uh, is a little leg stinger, so not cobbled, but. Um it comes just before the Canariberg, and the other one that they've not categorised comes after the Tainberg, which is the Stinbik race, which is making that four, two uncategorised climbs amongst this uh, little consecutive uh, difficult section of these four climbs. Chloe Hosking, do, Hosking doing an amazing job for her teammates, just keeping them at the front out of trouble. And you can see on the right of your screen, screen again, Mitchelton, Scott, they've got it all together. They've done this many of many times. But who is Chloe Hoskin working for? Well, Ale Cipollini will have a couple of cards to play, see how far they can get their riders to the finish. Uh, Paladin has been on great form, the uh, Italian rider. As I said, it would have been great to see how far Chloe could have gone, but uh, your favourite for the day, Amy Peters, at the front as well. So is she on domestique duties? She's got right behind her, Emily Diedrichsen from Bowles Dolmans. All the way at the left of the peloton trying to make her way to the front the european champion she lost uh, a little bit of room there but she's fighting her way back um the thing is rochelle I, I suddenly realized that she's not wearing that purple leaders jersey for the uci women's world tour yeah the youth cl classifi classification for the women's world tour has been a little bit confusing um different uh, reports on the internet on how the point system works so perhaps they're just trying to um no, but i i'm i'm talking is the leader of the world tour yep. she's not wearing that uh, purple magenta women's world tour jersey that may have had something to do with um sizing or it's a very interesting one, actually. But uh, Marta Bastinelli wearing the European Champions jersey today is actually the leader of the Women's World Tour. She might even get fined for that. Uh, the leader on the youth ranking, to which you uh, referenced, is not here, Lorena Bibisch. She is um, racing the Healthy Aging Tour, and she was racing the Volta Limburg Classic yesterday, won by Demi Vollering. Maybe you remember her. She was on the attack in Trofeo Binda from the Park Hotel Valkenburg team. Yeah, racing is on. And the leaders are almost caught. There's Bastianelli with her teammates, and it's 
Game on, Rochelle. This is often the case in uh, Tour of Flanders where the race is actually to the bottom of the climbs and you can see how all of the trains of the best riders have wanted to get their lead riders into the front and into position before they come onto these climbs. Here we go. Just had word that uh, Lisa Brennan may have been involved in a crash, which means mm. Kirsten Wield, pressure is on her shoulders for the team today, but they've already won the last two World Tour races with Kirsten Wield, so she'll just see how far she can go into this race, and uh, hopefully Lisa Brennan will make it back to the peloton. Yeah, we've been discussing that Kirsten Wild is uh, pretty tired. Uh, the contrary for her teammate in the medicine at the World Championships, Amy Peters, who's been telling me this morning that she still feels really good, and yet she's going on to race the Ardennes and maybe even Yorkshire. So she still feels really well, and then she takes a week off. Well, it's, uh, this is the first race of the season where the really big hitters will have a peak. Obviously, they've got the Ardennes Classic, but Ronde van Vlaanderen is a race that is just the Tour of Flanders. It's a one-day race that means so much. When you have the Ardennes Classics, you've got Amstel. Oh, here we have an attack now from a Kenyan tram rider. Cromwell. Tiff Tiffany Cromwell. Yeah, Tiffany Cromwell. Always racing aggressively, wanting to set this up for teammates. Elena Cecchini, the Italian, will be their, their rider of the day, but uh, Tiffany Cromwell, she always has a go. And she knows this race. She's been racing it for years, and she loves it. She thrives on the atmosphere, and she's just a racer. This is uh, Christina Sigard, former winner of Omloop at Newsblot, struggling at the back. And uh, many riders will struggle now. We're 115K into this race which is uh, a normal distance for 1.1 racing, which is the second category of racing. So it shows how hard this race is. At the front, we see Amanda Spratt looking very, very focused. She was very focused this morning as well. Just a tad nervous as well before the start. And she was uh, also very excited, just like Gracie Elvin. Oh, this is an exciting move from Tiffany Cromwell, and this is what we love to see. It's been a few years since we've seen Tiffany Cromwell on the attack in the uh, final parts of the race, but she knows this race well. She's obviously been looking after herself until this point. This would have been planned uh, for the lead riders, Tiffany Cromwell, just to do that attack, and you can see the great atmosphere there, and as I said, that's what Tiffany really thrives on, and it brings the best out in her. I remember a fantastic Grand Prix de Plouet in uh, Brittany where she raced uh, against Lucinda Brandt. Lucinda Brandt won it in the end, but Tiffany Cromwell raced a fantastic race um, back then. I think it was four or five years back. She's always a very attractive rider to watch. A very exciting rider to watch, and uh, she must be in great condition because to be able to ride away from a peloton with that many strong riders, she looks over her shoulder there. She knows she's got a little bit of a break, but this is a pretty tough climb. Also, the legs will be burning at this point. She'll want to get over this climb and then just get into a bit of a rhythm. This is one of those typical after-climb climbs that you have in Flanders that you think that you reach the top of the climb and then another climb comes. You said exciting rider, that's the same thing that I mentioned, uh, that's that's what I meant to say, attractive, but as you might know, I'm not a native speaker, so <laughs> I did not refer to the way that Tiffany Cromwell looks, I refer to the way that she races. So, got that out of the way, Rochelle. Sometimes there's little tiny nuanced differences in uh, the way you use words. Well, you can see this is the part of the climb where you think it's finished, and actually yesterday, I, s I was riding this course with Johan Museo and I attacked him about here. Then I saw, oh, it's not finished. The climb continues. So uh, a very tough part. But Tiffany Cromwell just getting over the top there. And then she goes all the way to the back of the bunch. So that attack may have been timed um, not to perfection, to say the least. Trek Segafredo and Mitchelton Scott. Look how comfortable Amanda Spratt looks there mm -hmm. in second wheel. Trek, Trek Segafredo, they've got Elisa Longo Borghini and Ellen Van Dyke to finish the race off. It's Ruth Mitchelton Winder, Scott, by the way. Ruth Winder as well, yeah, on the front there doing the job. So Mitchelton Scott, Annemiek Van Vluten and Amanda Spratt. They've also got Gracie Alban and then the CC Live team. We've got Ashley Mullen Passio and Mariana Voss. How important has the South African champion been so far? She was fourth here last year, and you wouldn't think because she's so small and so light being a climber. Of course, she was on the podium in the Giro. How important is Ashley Mormon to Marianne Voss? Very, very important. It was a great signing for Marianne Voss to bring across uh, Ashley Mormon Passio because they're a fantastic duo together. And while she's very petite and she looks like a climber, she's got great bike handling skills and a little punchy kick on her as well. So Ashley Moorman will be so, um, 
I think, valuable to Mariana Voss today. And I think the the two big favourites today would normally be Annemiek van Vluten and Mariana Voss. But Amanda Spratt for Mitchells and Scott could also be the leader. So it's those teams we said that have that duo that'll have the strongest chance. And Trek Segafredo have got the duo as well. Bowles Dolmans will have Chantel Black in there. We can just see at the front of your screen now, Chantel Black and Amy Peters is that magic duo for the Bowles Dolmans team. Yeah, they're trying to up the pace here as we move towards uh, the next climb. And that is going to be Dijenberg. And uh, yeah, things are trying, uh, starting to heat up here just a little bit. The uh, Swedish champion, Emilia Farlin, and also uh, French champion, the Austrian champion. All sorts of national champions coming to the front now. Amy Peters looked like she was trying to protect Chantel Black there, so that might give us a clear indication that Chantel Black would be the protected rider for Bowles Dolmans. Of course, she can uh, ride a great race. She finished top 10 five times already, Chantal Black, the Dutch national champion and, of course, former world champion in Bergen, Norway. And here comes Elena Cecchini, the Italian that Tiffany Cromwell would have been throwing that attack out there just to support her. And Amelia Farland's still in there. Mm -hmm. So the Swedish champion with the blue and the yellow stripe of the Swedish national champion's jersey. She's an outside chance for today. She's got a nice little sprint on her as well, and she's in good condition. And you can see the peloton has really dwindled down. So it has been a race of attrition as we hit these final climbs. Yeah, the final uh, climbs are coming up now. We're going towards the seventh hill of the day, which is uh, Tijenberg. It's a new addition to the course. Last year we skipped the Tijenberg, and now we're going to do that. And then uh, immediately after that, a very uh, fast descent and uh, about 10 minutes, 10 kilometers respite before we uh, hit the uh, Kruisberg. See some rider off the edge there. And some help. Oh, it's yeah. Ashley Moulman Passio. That's the uh, teammate of Mariana Voss, who we were just talking about, the South African. So Mariana Voss will need her to get back into that group for the support in the end of the race. But the heat is on at the moment. The pace is up, so that makes it really, really difficult for Ashley Moulman to come back. And because the peloton is split in so many different groups, the team cars will be further back because they will not be allowed to race or to ride directly after this peloton directly behind this peloton which makes it more difficult for Ashley Mormon to get that new wheel yeah if you have a mechanical at this point uh, it's very difficult to get uh, a quick service that's why having teammates and strength in numbers as we said in the peloton is so crucial and important in this part of the race because if you can't get your team car servicing you directly you need to be able to rely, rely on a teammate so numbers are so important at this point of the race you see some great riders at the front here. Amanda Spratt really, really focused and controlling here. Lotte Kopecki, the rider for the Belgian Lotte Sudal team, is there as well. Chantal Black, Amy Peters, Annemiek van Vleuten. All the big names are here when uh, we are approaching the Tijenberg. Let's see where Chloe Hoskin is, because she said this morning that she was dreading this climb just a little bit. But it looks like she's uh, still there in the peloton. Lucinda Brandt. Through the middle, Iriona Mine, one of the teammates of Chloe Hoskin, the Japanese champion. And Marta Bastinelli looking so, so good there at the right side of the road. Remember last week, uh, Rochelle, on the Kemmelberg, she was just throwing away those punches. She was so, so incredibly good. And then I thought when she was riding the Kemmelberg, it's like, just take it easy. Just rely on your sprint. But she was so much expressing how strong she, she was. was and i don't know if it was intentional she just has such good form at the moment that she wants to push on the legs she wants to have a hard race she said many times in the last few weeks that she gets nervous with the big bunches coming to the finish she wants to have a small peloton arrive at the finish and uh, she is one of the fastest sprinters in the peloton so she can win from nearly any combination of riders into the finish so she wants to make it as hard as possible but this is an impressive ride to this point from Lotta Kopecki a former world champion in the Madison with Jolene Dorda and now they hit the cobbles. Yeah Kopecki she was fifth back in 2017 had to sit out the edition last year because of an injury but uh, with her current form she is uh, really thriving she was fifth in Drenthe she was of course third in the Panna she was fifth last week in Gent Wevelgem so Lotte Kopecki is on fire, taking that form from riding all winter on the track, taking that, also that, um, that, um, how do you call that, that she can just 
increase the tempo. She has that punch that she takes from the track, well, takes it here in the Flemish Ardennes. She's looking very comfortable and at home on the cobbles. Amy Peters just driving it there. We said she'll be riding for Chantal Black. Amanda Spratt looking very comfortable with Annemiek Van Vluten tucked in behind. Elisa Longo Borghini is there as well. Floortje Mackay, Lucinda Brand, the two Sunweb riders, Marta Bastianelli, Jona Mina, and the struggle at the back for one of the Tipco riders, Lauren Stevens, here with number 105. 164 is a rider from Kazakhstan, Umut Sanova. Thankfully, I got that out right. But at the front, all the big hitters are here. Where is my Vos? Do we see that orange helmet and those rainbow bands on the arm? We see yeah. Avi Kaubus, her teammate, so my Vos should not be far. Let's see if we can see the former world champion. Looks like Amy Peters is struggling a little bit. Well, she's been on the front of uh, this peloton on this climb, and you can see on the cobbles, it really does show which riders are feeling comfortable and uh, which ones are struggling and wrestling a little bit with their bike to keep that momentum and contact with the road. We haven't talked about tyre pressures yet, but that is so important at the Tour of Flanders. We've had reports of um, teams riding as low as four bars in their tyres, so... You know, back in the day when I raced, there wasn't that much uh, knowledge amongst the teams and the mechanics and things like that. So they were riding, you know, we were riding six and seven bars. Now they're down to, you know, as low as four bars. So the pressure very low. And you can see the riders that are comfortable, they would have done a lot of work to their bike and been out there testing it. Dry weather today, so a lot of um, riders very well tuned with their bikes. There's Amy Peters on the front with Chantel Black just behind so that'll be uh, it looks to me like Chantel Black is the leader for the Bowles Dolmans team very impressive climb there from Lotta Capecchi Marta Bastinelli looked comfortable in there as well and Sarah Elvin Roy. and uh, Sarah Roy on the left side of your screen trying to get a bottle in which she succeeds it's an energy gel we've got about an hour left of racing a little bit over the hour because we've got so many climbs still to do I think we've got an hour and 10 minutes left to race 41 kilometers. Um, talking about tire pressure, that's the kind of thing that they figure out when they do the recon. CCC Live, they went on a, on a training ride, on a recon ride a few, uh, few days back, just uh, before the Tour of Flanders. And that's, that's what they used to decide what kind of wheels are we going to use, what kind of tire pressure are we going to use. And they did not want to share that knowledge with us. Yeah, uh, I was speaking one of the, to one of the mechanics that said that um, he was spending all day, uh, two days ago, changing the tires to tubeless. So they weren't riding tubular, they were riding the tubeless. And uh, they actually inject the compound into the tubeless tire. And uh, now we're seeing some attacking in uh, this descent. It could be Elisa Longo Borghini from the Trek Segafredo team just taking advantage of her descending skills. Awfully early, <laughs> 40k out. But she did it 35 kilometers out when she won this race a few years back. Well, and everybody thought she was crazy. It's also just a matter of making it harder for the other riders because it's uh, come so natural and easy to her to get through the corners and attack on a descent. It may have even been Trixie Warwick, but we'll get a little bit of a closer look at who that rider was that attacked on the descent. Well, it's sure going to hurt the rest of the peloton. We are 120 kilometers into this race. 40k still to go with uh, climbs like the uh, duo of Kruisberg Hoton, the Oude Kwaardemond and Paterberg, you know, that horrible, very short 400 meter long cobbled climb, which peaks at 20%, 20%. Well, the Paderberg is one of my favourite climbs in the tour, tour of Flanders, in the Flanders region. It's very steep and cobbled, but short, and uh, you can see the top. Whereas the Camel, the Camelberg, um, it's a very, very tough one. The old requirement for me is just way too long. Uh, but these, uh, these riders, I mean, the thing that makes Tour of Flanders so special is this year, the organisers have done a fantastic job to put all of the main climbs and even in the same order in many cases as the men's race so they've got all the crowds and spectators and the atmosphere Lotto Kopecki of Lotto she looks very comfortable today on the front Sarah Roy doing the job for Amanda Spratt and Annemiek van Vluten in the crucial parts of the race it would be fantastic for Belgium if uh, Lotto Kopecki can win this Tour of Flanders only one Belgian winner in the past in 2010 Grace Verbeke and well, while the Belgians are pretty dominant in the men's racing, they are not in the women's racing. And uh, it's just because there's not a lot of young Belgian riders racing, so they're not 
um, ride against each other. They n do not make each other better like they do, for example, with the big numbers of riders back in the Netherlands. So it's a big difference between the men's racing and the women's racing when it comes to uh, being dominant on the world stage. But if Lotte Kopecky manages to do that, she will do a huge favor to racing, to women's racing in Belgium, because she will be a huge inspiration to young riders in this country. Well, if a, a sprinter like Lotte Kopecky can get to the finish, you would think that Marta Bastinelli and also Kirsten Wield could make it to the finish. So, in my opinion, the uh, the last three climbs are just too hard, especially those last two, for um, the sprinters to come back. But they do have that 13-kilometre flat run into the finish. If the wind picks up and they have a bit of a headwind, you could see a little sprint group come back. But uh, That's what happened when uh, Rivera won it. Yeah. When Anna van Dijk brought back that... Uh, group after the Paterberg and uh, got her teammate Rivera into winning position. Let's see if we can spot Kirsten Bild in this group because Bart Marta Bastinelli is definitely there and we see one of the WNT Roto riders at the back of the bunch, two of them. So hopefully those are Lisa Brenauer and Kirsten Bild. And a big group well, trying to come back. We have a little bit of a, a lull now in the parkour as it will take us another 12 kilometers before we get to the next climb, which is the combination of Krausberg and Hoton. So maybe they have a chance to, uh, to get back to the front here. So the Krausberg and the Hoton, those two climbs kind of roll very closely in with each other, and then they have a little bit of time, but not long until they hit the old Aquamont, the longer cobbled tough climb, and then a little short run until they get to the Paderberg and then that 13 kilometers into the finish. So there you see one of the VIP setups for the day. It's amazing how much infrastructure goes into servicing the uh, the fans and the VIPs out there today. There's uh, a lot of really big um, building constructions for the fans and on the attack now it's Lisa Klein of Canyon Tram. More cobbles which is 12. 200 meters of cobble. So this seems to be the tactic for the Canyon Schramm team. We just saw that attack by Tiffany Cromwell and now former German champion Lisa Klein is going to try. Who could be their designated rider today? I think it might be. Well, we've got Cassie Nuadoma in there, but uh, Elena Cecchini, she's actually the partner of Ella Viviani, who's a very exciting uh, track cyclist. And she would have taken a lot of... Um, confidence from having the, the advantage of a pro male cyclist guiding her along the way and her confidence is building she s showed a lot of talent a few years ago and then she won the individual time trial for italy last year at the national championships and uh, i think her confidence is building so i think elena cecchini and uh also i mean tiffany's done her job already and uh kasia Nuadoma, an exciting rider for kenyan tram as well who's no doubt going to be there in the finale and what about Alexis Ryan? Of course, she has a good sprint on her as well. Yeah, I think she might be used as a domestique, as we've already seen Tiffany Cromwell being used up. There's Lisa Brenoir for WNT back, so she had a little crash touchdown earlier, and now back in the peloton. A rider we haven't spoke about much at the front, Christine Majurus on domestique role for Bowles Dolmans. Worth her weight in gold. Absolutely, a, a massive, valuable rider to the Bowles Dolmans team. And now we see Mariana Voss for the first time at the front of the peloton in that orange jersey, CCC. She's got the World Championship stripes on her sleeve. She's already won the Tour of Flanders and would love to make it too. It's her main goal this uh, spring season. She comes up the back of a fantastic cyclocross season in which she won uh, some World Cups. Um, we can see she's still got quite a few teammates in the peloton there, which is interesting yep. for Shana. the CC Live team because they've got those two names in Mariana Voss and uh, Ashley Millman Passio, and then they've got some younger riders, but they're doing very well. Mm -hmm. And they've done a lot of recon on this course. They know it very well. Yeah, three Dutch riders here in the same peloton as Marianne Vos. Rianne Marcus, Evie Kuipers, Shana Korva. And let's see if we spot that South African jersey if she's back after that uh, little mechanical. Do you see Ashley Mormon? I see Kirsten Wild there for WNT, number 61. And also Marta Bastinelli. So they're your two sprinters that we're wondering if they'll make it to the finish. Marta Bastinelli in top form. And if Kirsten Will gets to the finish, she's won the last two World Tour races. That would be very interesting. Royal Sprint. Let's hope now the pace is down just a little bit that Ashley Mormon manages to uh, to come back. She will be of, uh, of great importance to Mariana Vos in the final. 
Also, Marta Cavalli is there. She is the Italian champion. She's currently third in the UCI Women's World Tour, young rider ranking, really having a breakthrough season at the moment, Marta Cavalli. This is Roxana Kneteman. This is going to be her last Tour of Flanders. She's going to retire after this year, the daughter of uh, former world champion Gerry Kneteman. Well, Chloe Hosking from Ale Cipollini is still in the peloton. She was very worried about the Tannenberg and she successfully got over that and now getting comfortable again in the peloton. No doubt she'll move to the front before the next climb of the Kruisberg. And it's uh, Christy Majuris on the front of Luxembourg with the national champion's jersey of Luxembourg, just leading out her Bowles Dolman's teammates. I think uh, Christine Majiris is now at a grand total of 25 Luxembourg titles across the uh, time trial road race and, of course, cyclocross. Um, a lovely rider, like I said, worth her weight in gold. Always uh, very approachable, like most of the women's peloton, by the way. So if you want to go watch a women's race, the... Uh, the buses are not locked up. You can just uh, chat uh, with the riders, ask for autographs, ask for pictures. That's the great thing about women's racing. And um, the thing at Bulls Dormans is that nobody seems to have a regular Bulls Dormans jersey anymore. They're it's national champions, world champions everywhere. And it's a very, very tricky situation for the clothing manufacturers when you have uh, a, a team of, say, 15 riders and you have 10 of them wearing national champs jerseys that just means a lot more work for the manufacturers getting all of the national championships made and uh, in Europe they have the national championships in June which is a, a tricky thing because after the national championships they generally only have a few days until the Giro d'Italia starts and the manufacturers are going crazy changing all of the uh, national champions jerseys so as women's cycling is getting more professional now they are preparing in advance just in case the national champions change little bit of uh, an increase in pace by uh, Ruth Winder here, followed by, is it Gracie Alvin? Yeah, Gracie Alvin doing a great job in the domestique role today, which is interesting given that she's been second at the Tour of Flanders in the past, but such a strong team with Annemiek Van Bluten and Amanda Spratt. That like she's a little breakaway starting to uh, appear here with uh, Evie Kuipers for the CCC Lift team, Amanda Spratt for Mitchelton Scott, Ruth Winder. We see the Norwegian champion as well for the uh, high-tech team. Well, speaking about the world champion, of course, we haven't talked about her just yet. She is uh, the winner of last year's Tour of Flanders, Anna van der Breche, but she, uh, she's she been doing other stuff. She's been racing the Cape Apic in uh, South Africa on the mountain bike, won it as well with um, uh, Annika Langfat. And she's coming back for the Ardennes Classics, which she won also, of course, uh, Flèche Wallon, uh, Liège, Bastogne, Liège. So she's having a little bit of a different approach to the season, Anna van der Breche. And she was, um, it was with a sad heart, she said, that she's missing out on Tour de Flanders. But, uh, but she has to make her choices, of course, for her program. She's won so many big races. Uh, you know, with Tour of Flanders already uh, having won that, she's got a big season ahead of her. And two years ago, winning the triple at Amstel Gold, Flechelon and Liège, Bastogne Liège, she'll want to go back there in the Ardennes Classics and have a, a really good run at it again so but it's it's tough it's you know the atmosphere here she'll be watching it very closely on tv um after a training today no doubt but uh, she is in top form because she won the cape epic along with annika langveld so she's in good form but to make that call to sit out today a tough one but uh bigger things for her ahead this season I'm still trying to spot if ashley molman managed to come back we've still got a very big group where uh, the group that was chasing after the Tyenberg has managed to come back. Some uh, riders from WNT Rotor as well. Ana este Sanat Esteban, the former Spanish national champion. She is uh, fortunately back. She was on the deck. She crashed uh, a little while ago, but she's back on this, uh, on this group. So, like I said, we've got a little bit of a lull going on before we hit the uh, last three climbs of the day, or basically it's four. Klausberg Roton, which are usually called as one climb, but they are two and then uh, Quaremont, Paterberg, and then we've got a 13k stretch to the finish line where still everything can happen. So far, it's, uh, it's been an interesting race with uh, increases in pace and then some, unfortunately, some crashes taking out the American champion, Corin Rivera, among others. But um, there's still everything to play for. I said very early on today, Rochelle, that Amy Peters was my favorite to win this. Um, last week I had one point with Kirsten Wilt, so are you going to score the equaliser today with your pick? Well, I haven't actually made a call for Oof. today. I'd love to see Amanda Spratt take the victory, but it'll be a question of whether she's supporting Annemiek van Vluten today or not. That's the big question. 
but uh, you can't really go past Marta Bassinelli too. She's um, the only thing that uh, I would doubt is that she's been on really top form since Strada Bianchi, where she finished fourth, which is incredible for somebody who's more known as a sprinter. If she could get to the finish, she's hungry for today. She's got the team boss in Bianchi's here watching. Uh, so, and Mariana Voss would be one of my favourites as well. I just love to see her win. She's got the experience and the knowledge. She's got everything. She's got the form. But I need one name to get to well, get you equal with name. me. It's a hard call uh, because numbers do play a big game, and we don't know yet if Ashley Millman's back in the peloton. But uh, I still don't see that magnificent South African jersey. So I'm a bit fearful that she's not. Well, I'll go with Mariana Voss. It's a, it's um, it's always the sympathy pick and fantastic yeah, winner to exactly. have. Yeah, exactly. It's emotional. It's emotional. And uh, there's riders like, uh, I mean, Chantel Black is still in there, looking quite comfortable. She has the support of Amy Peters. Lotta Kopecky sitting comfortable in there as well. There's so many riders that could potentially win this race, and that's why it's so exciting. Now, Trek Segafredo are always looking very good together. They've got um, some clear motives today. We haven't seen Ellen Van Dyke too much at the front, so she might be. A, she'll definitely be a rider we see launch an attack. But like she did on Wednesday, of course, in Dvorstor Flanders, one of those uh, Flanders Classics races as well that you could see on the live stream on Facebook. And uh, she went out 16k to go, full time trial mode, and uh, won that race in a magnificent fashion, Ellen Van Dyke. So we've got a group. If I count it quickly, I think we're down to about 40, 50 riders. When uh, the sun is still fighting to get out, it's still a little bit over, a little bit clouded here, but thankfully it's dry. There was some rain last night, but uh, we have a dry Flanders today. There's hardly any wind. If we look at the wind here, Rochelle, in the finish straight, is it going to be any factor? we reckoned with no and i think like uh, i actually rode down the finish straight uh, in the sportive cyclo that they had yesterday which was amazing 17,000 people out riding on the flanders course organized by flanders classics it's one of the best days of the year for cyclists who are not at a professional level just to get out there and uh, get amongst it and ride these climbs that the professionals ride we had a headwind on the 13 kilometer run into the finish and i was thinking this is going to be great for sprinters to get back in but today the winds really dropped off there's not a breath of wind out there so I don't think the wind in the finish is going to make a really big difference I think it's going to be down to the legs after they get over the old Aquamont and the Paterberg and that's where it's all going to light up and that's what these riders have been waiting for and as we've always said strength in numbers is what's going to help today Those Dolmans have got a plan here Majiris is back at the front she was all the way at the uh, back at the front she was all the way at the back uh, a few kilometers back but this shows the value of the Luxembourg champion. She's followed by uh, Kopecky, then Black, and then uh, the other rider from Lotto Sedel might be Danny de Jong. Let's see if we can catch a number. Another interesting rider from the Belgian team is uh, Julie van der Velde. She's um, a former um, athlete going on the 800, 1500 meters um, races. And that's the way they try to move forward now in Belgium, trying to pick uh, athletes from other sports other endurance sports and uh, get them into cycling and Julie van der Velde is uh, a prime pick she has had some good results she's a good climber so uh, maybe she can be of, uh, of value to a lot of Kopecky she's got many teammates still this uh, part of the race Lotte Kopecky two years ago she was fifth in this race so uh, that's good for the Belgian Lotto Sudal team I was out uh, on the course talking to one of the mechanics of Lotte Kopecky a couple of days ago and he said the toughest thing for her is that she doesn't have a lot of strong teammates that can be there in the final but uh, from the look on her face Lotte Kopecky is riding very comfortable today so she's obviously got herself into condition but she's a rider that will know every inch of these roads to live here makes such a difference just knowing where the rights and lefts come where the top of the climbs are which side of the road to be on whether the cobbles are the roughest or the smoothest so all of that kind of thing that kind of knowledge really helps and i think that's where mariana Voss has a little bit of an edge she has the condition of anyone else in the race but she also has the technical skills and talking of technical skills we haven't mentioned too much listen to brand from team <laughs> sunweb I, I love it when you make that connection between technical, technical skills, skills and, and lucinda brand you know i love her and you know i love how she handles her bike especially when it comes to cornering yeah lucinda brand she didn't have the best of results so far but her third place her podium place in dwarstel flander on wednesday did give her um 
some confidence, I think. And confidence is very important. If you if you look back at your story about Lotte Kopecky, she has she seems to have come of age now that she had these results. She has been top five in three out of five World Tour races so far, and that does something to a rider. And I think to Lucinda Brandt, it might be an important third place that she got on Wednesday. Absolutely, coming into Tour of Flanders, if you have that result and it builds your confidence, you really need confidence in a race like this. We just saw that super domestique of Christine Majura. She's finished her role for Bowles Dolmans today. Now it's Sarah Roy of Mitchelton Scott using up every last little bit of energy she has to put her riders, Amanda Spratt and Annemiek Van Vluten, in a good position coming into the finale. Still 29 kilometers to go, but two very significant climbs for these riders to get past first. Coming up in uh, one and a half kilometer is Klausberg and uh, Krausberg and it's uh, 2,500 meters. Averages 5% and uh, peaks at 9%. And you can see what Sarah Roy is doing here for her team captain, uh, Annemiek van Vloot. She tries to set the pace to make sure that uh, the team are at the front when we come to uh, to that climb. I don't think it's the climb where Annemiek van Vloot should try her attack. I think she should wait for Paterberg if she has the time to wait. But uh, what Sarah Roy is doing here is uh, is very strong. Well, I think that's what Mitchell and Scott are going to do. They're using up uh, their strength now. It'll be Annemiek van Vluten will go on a massive attack. Amanda Spratt will cover some wheels. And now it's Trek Segafredo moving to the front. Great ride by the American Ruth Wanda. She's been a very instrumental part of the team today, trying to set things up for Elisa Longo Borghini and Ellen Van Dyke. Of course, she had a wonderful Giro last year, Ruth Wanda. She even got to wear the uh, pink jersey. She made her move to Trek Segafredo in showing that she has been, uh, that she is a great addition to that new women's team. Look how relaxed Cicely Utrup Ludwig is looking there with uh, Mariana Vos. Hazia Nievadoma, Chantal Black, Amy Peters, Elisa Longo, Borghini, Lu uh, Lucinda Brandt, like you said. And uh, is that uh, Lisa Brennauer? Yes, it's Lisa Brennauer. I think I can make my call now, Jose, after seeing the... Uh, you say Voss. The, the look I, of Voss. Uh, I say, I say Voss. I say Voss. She's on a mission today. <laughs> She's got herself into condition. She's talked more about trying to win this Tour of Flanders than she has any other race I've known in her career uh, in the last couple of weeks. So that makes me feel that uh, she has done everything in her preparation. There's Chloe Hosking just struggling now over the Kruisberg. And if you look at the difference between Lucinda Brandt and Marianne Vos, who both had a great cyclocross season, Lucinda Brandt seems to struggle with the move to the road, while Marianne Vos has really thrived off the back of that uh, cyclocross season. So two riders with this, a similar um, a schedule, similar program of racing, and two very different results. So that's uh, very interesting to, uh, to see. And of course, the cyclocross riders are booming at the moment. Bout van Aert, Mathieu van der Poel with the men's Tenek Stibar, of course and uh, also in the women's peloton with uh, Marianne Vos, Lucinda Brandt. There is uh, Mitchelton Scott again. Sarah Roy did her bit, and the next bit is being done by Amanda Spratt. So we're off to Klausberg. This is one of those climbs where you think, yet again, hey, we're done with this climb. Let's get over it, and then we're not done. And another part comes. Well, Amanda Spratt now taking to the front. Is she doing the job for Annemiek van Vluten? As she said on her Twitter feed, heading to Belgium to support my teammates at Ronde van Vlaanderen, taking the pressure off herself as a leader. And this looks like she may be setting, setting things up for Annemiek van Vluten today. She's just applied a little bit of pressure there. Oof. Some cobbles here, which makes the peloton nervous. Oh, whoa, that was a horrible crash by the French champion, Aude Bianic. She just... Well, she just flew off the cobbles and just missed that car. Just narrowly missed that car, but thankfully she's back on her feet, the French champion from the Movistar team, Aude Bianic. But that was a terrible thing to watch. <laughs> so this is the part between Krausberg and Houton, and this is the exact same part where last year Anna van der Breche placed her attack. Jolien Dore, of course, she has been off the bike for uh, three weeks, so this is a little bit difficult for her. And also in this group, Rochelle, is Kirsten Bild. Dropped. Oh. We had high hopes that maybe she could stay in there. She said she's feeling very tired at this point of the season after a long track season, winning her two world championships on the track, already won two world tour races. And look at Chantel Black, she's looking comfortable as well. She'll be the lead rider for Bowles Dolmans. 
Looks like an attack by uh, Polish rider Kazian Yevadoma for Canyon Shram. Well, this is an interesting part. Everybody knows, of course, that last year this was the part where Anna van der Breche placed her attack, rode away, and nobody ever saw her again except for on the podium after the race. Well, it's interesting, isn't it, that the absence of one rider like Anna van der Breggen can change the whole dynamics of this race. So in the last couple of weeks, a lot of people have been talking about whether Anna van der Breggen would be racing or not. But uh, there was an interview recently where uh, someone said she never intended to race the Tour of Flanders this year. So it would have been a, a slightly different race had we have had Anna van der Breggen in the peloton. This is uh, the group with uh, Kirsten Wilt, and oh, they're not waiting for her. Of course they're not waiting for her. This uh, looks like to be the elite group with an attack by Nievadoma and Utrup Ludwig and Lisa Longo Borghini. Ooh, look how smooth Chantal Black covered that attack. Chantal Black looks in very good condition. You can see Lisa, Lisa Brenner work behind from WNT really fighting, but this is a strong attack by Kazia Nuadoma. Another one of the Kenyan tram riders, like we said with Tiffany Cromwell, just amazing riders to watch. They just race, they race on instinct, they make it exciting, they get out there and get on the attack, and Kazia Nuadoma, we've seen her do it over and over. Now we see Ruth Winder, the American, just slipping off the back of the peloton. Her job's done for the day, but uh, Elisa Longo Borghini, not keen to carry that, that on. She's just gonna pull over. Floten and Voss and Bastianelli tries to uh, cover that attack. No, that was a first little test by Annemiek van Vloten. She makes it look so incredibly simple. Mayanna Voss saw that. Um, Bastianelli saw it as well. Bastianelli, of course, still on fine form. They are not getting rid of her that easily on Quaremont and Paterberg. Well, it's definitely going to be the ambition of riders like Annemiek van Vluten and Mariana Voss to try and shake Marta Bastianelli because she's super fast at the finish. She's in such good condition. And as we said, she has the motivation of having the team boss, Bjarne Reese, in the team car watching today. So, Marta Bastianelli, I mean, she wants this really bad as well. Can the likes of Mariana Voss and Annemiek van Vluten drop a rider like Lotte Kopecky still in there and Marta Bastinelli very fast finishes. Is this uh, Soraya Paladin, an Italian rider, who's been um, having a breakthrough year so far. Let's see if we can confirm that by numbers. Maybe it's her German teammate, Romy Kasper. Oh, this is interesting. It is uh, Lisa Klein canyon strand team and there seems to be a little bit of doubt going on in the peloton at the moment who is going to cover this attack well interestingly ellen van dyke is putting the pressure down we thought that it might have been elisa longo borghini working for ellen van dyke but in many of these cases they use both of their riders just to cover things and gracie Albans made her way into that break as well and a rider from virtue the team of marta bastinelli it might be um uh, bertizzolo of course, she does not wear that uh, yellow jersey anymore, of that, or that uh, blue jersey, as I should say. 25k to go. We've got good news for our American viewers. Corin Rivera has no fractures. She has had some x-rays in the hospital, but luckily for her, no fractures for the American champion, Corin Rivera. Mayana Vos, looking focused, looking relaxed, but of course, she will be suffering as well. Yeah, I think there's a little bit of pain in the legs there. She's just gone right to the back of this group, taking some deep breaths. If she was feeling fantastic, we normally see her just cover moves like this and be uh, always near the front. So a little bit of sign of fatigue. And it's got to play on their minds when they see riders like Marta Bastinelli and Lotte Kopecky just sitting comfortable. Sprinters that are supposed to do it tough on the climbs. But, it, you know, Mitchell and Scott are riding a fantastic race here. They really used Amanda Spratt to drive the pace on that climb. Sarah Roy, an amazing job as well. And now Gracie Elvin out there pushing the pace. Yeah, great team tactics by uh, Martin Vespu, the sports director of the Australian Mitchell and Scott team. Some riders coming back to this uh, attack. Lisa Brenauer looking uh, very solid. Oof, coming back there. That was a near miss. The dangerous thing about these Belgian roads is there's this uh, thing in the middle of the road where these uh, concrete slaps are being glued together. And sometimes these gaps between these concrete slaps are pretty wide. And if you're not paying attention, if your front wheel or rear wheel gets stuck into it, you are doomed. Yeah. A lot of the riders these days are riding 28 millimeter tires. So if you went back a few years, they were still riding 23 millimeter tires. But now on the 28s, they've got a little bit of a softer pressure. We don't see as many crashes as they're crossing over that join in the road. But uh, we have seen in the past a lot of riders just come off crossing that 
little gap in the road. It looks like Mariana Voss may have jumped her way across to that move. And if so, there'll be some attention mm -hmm. from that peloton to close that down pretty quickly. They cannot let Mariana Voss go. Yeah, it's Mariana Voss. Great race, uh, by the way, today by uh, Team Hightech and by the Norwegian champion, Vita Heine. She is um, 34 and she's uh, riding a fantastic Tour of Flanders today. Yeah, they call it the uh, the big small team, don't they? They classify mm -hmm. themselves as a smaller team, but uh, they do punch above their weight. As the other team uh, of Marta Bassinelli, Virtue, a similar thing. They call themselves a smaller team, but uh, with already uh, leading the World Tour. And three World Tour wins. <laughs> Or two, one World Tour win with uh, Bastianelli and a few other wins uh, not on the World Tour. But it, it also makes sure that the level of the rest of the team gets bigger as well. If you've got one star rider or two star riders, the other riders are trying to keep up and the overall atmosphere on the team is, is a champion atmosphere. So everybody gets lifted up. Well, it's a little bit different dynamic in the peloton this year because last couple of years we've just seen Bowles Dolmans dominate every single race they go into this year we've got some of the talent mixed out over a lot of new teams that have come up and smaller teams becoming stronger so it's a little bit more open and certainly the race today we could have a winner from any of these teams great presence by the Sunweb team still three riders in this group with of course Lucinda Brandt and Floortje Mackay Chanta Black former world champion she has crashed you can see that on her elbow, she crashed with two of her teammates, Amelie Pieterikse, the Danish champion, and uh, Jip van der Bos, who had to abandon the race. But uh, Black doesn't seem to uh, too bothered by that crash. Ellen van Dijk at the back of this group, just like the Swedish champion, Emilia Farlin. So this looks like a, a nice elite group, Rochelle. Yeah, still a little bit bigger group than I would have expected at this point of the race. A few riders in there that... Uh, but in saying that, I don't think that the... The big hitters have really lit it up yet. There's just waiting now, I think, for the old acquirement. We're going to see some action. But uh, all the big names we've been speaking about still there. Alan Van Dyke, Marta Bastinelli, Mariana Voss, Lisa longo Borghini still in there as well. A few former winners here in this group. Great to see Sophie de Faust for the Park Hotel team there as well. Biggest team in numbers seems to be uh, uh, Sunweb at the moment. Three riders there. Well, interestingly, they do have such a strong team on paper, but not an outstanding favourite for the day. Chantel Black, four bowls dolmens. Lisa Brenner is in top form riding for WNT. Here come Canyon Tram with uh, Lisa Klein once again doing the job for Elena Cicchini. So the first rider there, Lisa Klein, she has the German national stripe on her sleeve and just behind her the Italian national stripe of Elena Cecchini, representing a former victory in their national championship championships. Yeah, these things are pretty helpful for us commentators. Yeah, makes them easy to spot. Amanda Spratt I always spot with the blue shoes and she's uh, one of the shortest riders in the peloton, riding for Mitchelton Scott. And yeah, fantastic silver medal of course, Lex Dastier in, uh, in Innsbruck and of course a podium place as well in the Giro. Fantastic year for Amanda Spratt. She won the Bira that horrible, horribly tough stage race in the Basque country. So she had a fantastic year, and maybe she can guide uh, Annemiek van Vloten to her second Flanders win here today. Well, as I said earlier in the commentary, Jose, I would love to see Annemiek van Vluten really laid on the line to set up Amanda Spratt for this uh, Tour of Flanders today, because Amanda Spratt's worked so hard the last couple of years for Annemiek van Vluten, a little bit in her shadow, but doing the brunt work for the Dutch rider in an Australian team. I would just love to see Annemiek van Vluten really laid on the line for Amanda Spratt today. But uh, we're yet to see, we've seen Amanda Spratt do a little bit of work. We haven't seen Annemiek van Vluten driving it on the front. You can see Amanda Spratt moving Annemiek van Vluten up to the front now. So that seems to be the role. And uh, perhaps because Annemiek van Vluten has won the Tour of Flanders before. But uh, as I said, it'd be lovely to see Amanda Spratt have a lead role in the Tour of Flanders while she's on good form. see a lot of tired legs now 140 kilometers in 148 if you count the neutral um, of this race as well that is a big day out on the bike for many of these riders and the back here Julie van der Velde the former track athlete and uh, Kelly van der Steen her Belgian compatriot 
they are struggling to uh, to catch on to this group where their team captain uh, Lotto Kopecky is still part of the race and the fact that we see the team cars following the lead group indicates that the gap is bigger than a minute usually quite significant so I don't think we'll see other pelotons come back now this is going to be the winner from this group and Canyon Tram they are doing a fantastic job. Not uh, one of the big favourites we put on the list, but Elena Cecchini, definitely capable. She's in good form. The Italian sitting in third wheel there. Yeah. She was uh, fifth uh, four years ago. Elena Cecchini finished top five twice in this uh, Tour of Flanders. So maybe she can uh, step it up a little bit and get onto that podium or maybe even win this race. Who knows what is possible for the former Italian champion. But Canyon Schramm are playing a great, great race. And um, they've got their three riders here, Lisa Klein, Cecchini, Nievadoma, followed by Paladin for the uh, Ali Cipollini. This is uh, the lead towards the Quadermont. Of course, one of the biggest VIP villages of the Tour of Flanders is always at the Quadermont. And the Quadermont is a pretty long climb, Rochelle. It's 2,200 meters. It peaks at 12%, but the hardest part comes when we get onto the cobbles. Exactly. Um, it's it's quite cruisy just uh, building into it, but the uh, old requirement when you get onto those cobbles and you get into a steep section with cobbles, you have to really fight hard to keep the momentum. With tired legs, it's going to be a, a tough section. and We'll see who has a little bit of explosiveness. And I think that's why a rider like Annemiek van Vluten, those riders that train over longer distances and have that age and experience are really going to come into force in this race because of the longer distances. There's still so many scenarios possible in this Tour of Flanders this year. It's been a very exciting addition and still many, many potential winners in this group, including some former winners like Longo Borghini van Dijk, uh, Annemiek van Vleuten, Marianne Vos, four former winners in this group. Of course, Marta Bastianelli is still part of this group and very, very dangerous on the finish line. So if Annemiek van Vleuten or Marianne Vos want to win this race, they have to attack on the Paterberg and especially if you look at Van Vloten with her time trial skin, she is, of course, the world champion. She has to do that attack on the Paterberg and then go full time trial mode. And Rochelle, if I look outside uh, towards these nice umbrellas at the VIP village at the finish line, I see that the wind is picking up a little bit. Yeah, it is picking up a little bit. In the afternoon, it tends to do that. I don't know if it's going to be significant enough. And as we can see, the leader is going to come from this group. Now the pressure goes down on the old requirement. Now we'll really see who has the condition. Marta Bastinelli is right up there. She's using the right side of the road, which has a little bit smoother cobbles. It's a dangerous place to be because there's a lot of dirt. It's been a bit uh, dry. We had some rain overnight, but not enough. I think the the loose gravel on the right side of the road will be a challenge, but uh, certainly where I choose to ride because those cobbles in the middle of the road are quite aggressive now they're hitting one of the steeper parts of the climb fantastic fantastic job by young sofia bertizzolo teammate of marta bastien at virtue she's leading the way here on the claremont and we see some riders struggling like uh, former canadian champion lea kirkman what a fantastic job by bertizzolo well mariana voss right there and uh, you can see it's gracie alvin that's guiding Annemiek van vluten over the old claremont Chantel Black still looks quite comfortable. Amy Peters there as well. Lucinda Brand. Sophie de Faust, Lotte Kopecky, Ellen van Dijk. It looks like Brody Chapman is there as well, the, four, uh, the Australian rider. And everybody is suffering here. Ruth Winder all the way at the back at the Quadermont. And this is the great thing about Tour of Flanders. All these people are here. They're cheering on the women's peloton. It's quite a unique thing. And Marta Bassinelli is doing this it again. Is move. She is displaying that she is incredibly strong. But why is Marta Bassinelli attacking on the Quadermont? Why is she not waiting for her sprint? She's got two teammates in this group. She could you she could win from, from a group as big as it is right now, but she wants to break this down. She really wants to win and she is showing how strong she actually is. Mariana Voss has been able to match that little surge. Elisa Longo Borghini just losing the wheel there. And Amy Peters as well with Ellen Van Dyke. But Ellen Van Dyke can shoot across to this. Mm. She's strong. She's got Lucinda Brand on her wheel. But Marta Bastinelli, she's come into this race in the form of her life. There she takes the right side of the road again on that smooth section. It's an incredible ride from Marta Bastianelli. And look at this atmosphere. Oh, oh, oh. Marta Bastianelli is just like on the Camelbear, showing what she is worth. But 
I'm just thinking, why, why, why? Just wait for it. You're not going to do a 13-kilometer solo being Bastianelli to the finish line. It's, it's suicide. She just wants to tire the leg. She wants to dwindle down this bunch. She wants to come to the finish with a small group. Who can match her? Mariana Voss can, that's for sure. She's right there. And you can see behind Ale Alina Cicchini just starting to struggle a bit. Annemiek van Vluten also fighting the bike on the cobble. Oh, oh Voss but is good. Marta Bastianelli, she is powerful. She's really hurting these riders. And now Gracie Elbin, she just wants to hang on there so she can get back to help Annemiek van Vluten. A lot of Swedish flags there. Amelia Farland's still amongst the group here. It's uh, Cicely Ludwig leading here now. The Bigler rider on top of the Oude Quademont. And then we go straight on to the last climb of the day. Takes us another four kilometers before we move to the gruesomely steep Paterberg. What an exciting race, Rochelle. Well, this is where it all happens. This one and the Paderberg. And I just looked into Annemiek van Vloten's face and I have never seen a suffer face like that before. Cecile Ludwig Uthrup, what a ride. She has to use the hills to her advantage, a pure climber, and she's really shot off the front there applying some pressure but Marta Bassinelli just staying in her groove so these are the riders Chantal Black that's a surprise so she's obviously not uh, firing on all cylinders today also Elisa Longo Borghini just lost the wheel there as well so this won't be good for their confidence coming into the final climb of the Paderberg once they get over the crest of this they've still got a little bit of uh, cobbles and downhill on smooth road and Cecile Ludwig Uthrop, she's not going to stay away from that group, but she'll try. She's a real racer and she just fights and you'll see the pain on her face. But the three riders behind will know they need to close this gap. Look out for the motorbike. And of course, there's a little bit of climbing in between the climbs. The group led by Annemiek van Vleuten. I think it's uh, Nieva Doma and Bastianelli. And then, of course, Marianne Vos uh, with Chantal Black in a second group. But uh, this Cicely Ludwig, she's giving her all and you might remember that interview that she gave after La Course last year. She was completely, completely exhausted, but still smiling. She's one of the favorites of the, of the crowds. Absolutely a crowd favorite. She gives so much emotion in her interviews. It's just so honest. Annemiek Van Vluten straight over the top. She wants to Opa. keep applying the pressure. <laughs> Elena Cecchini and Master Bat Marta Bastinelli, they are your four strongest riders of today's race. Will the group behind them get them back? I think these four riders will want to push on a little bit, but they are absolutely exhausted. It's Annemiek Van Vluten. She knows this is where her race is going to be won and lost. She has to apply the pressure and uh, then she'll have another go on the Paderberg, but uh, she can time trial as well, so she'll take her chances here. Elena Cecchini just behind her, Marta Bassinelli and Cecile Ludwig Utrup. So it's Mariana Voss. Oh, flat, uh, flat tyre, flat tyre for Mariana Voss, and of course the peloton is scattered. There's groups everywhere, so her team car is going to be way behind. This is going to be the end of the chances for Mariana Voss to win this Tour of Flanders. What a shame for Mayana Voss, mechanical, and she will not be in contention for today's win. Absolutely devastating for Mariana Voss. She had the condition, she wanted this race so bad and let down by a mechanical. That's gonna be a hard one to swallow, that's for sure. But uh, this is looking good for Marta Bastinelli because the only rider with potential to drop her on the Paderberg would be Annemiek van Vluten, but Bastinelli is looking just too strong today. It's three climbers and one sprinter. Three people who have finished top 10 in the Giro and have even won the Giro like Annemiek van Vloten have and Marta Bastianelli. So this is an ideal situation for the Italian rider Marta Bastianelli. This is a chasing group with uh, Ellen van Dijk pacing this group and if Mariana Vos could pick up a wheel she could potentially benefit from the work Ellen van Dijk is putting in here for Elisa longo Borghini, but her team car was way, way behind. So yeah, this really dampens the mood for the CCC Live team because uh, this is where Mariana Vos is at the moment, I think. There's only a few kilometers between the Old Aquamont and the Paderberg. I think this is a lot of Kopecky with a puncher as well. Oh, this is devastating for the Belgian crowd. Slot Kopecky seems to have a oh. mechanical. Yeah, she has a mechanical. She knows it's all over. 
the cars just aren't close enough to do a quick service. This is absolutely devastating for Lotte Kopecky. She pulls over, but that might be the end, I think, for Lotte Kopecky. And she looked so incredibly smooth. And even the team, the Lotte Chandal team, had strength in numbers. They even had some riders in the first group. So this all plays into the hands of Marta Bastianelli. Is she's going to take the biggest victory of her career? She was in the top 10 twice before in Flanders. And if you look at her statistics, you would not give a big chance to Marta Bastianelli today. But given her form in recent years, and even even if you look at Strade Bianchi, where the hills are steep as well, I do not think that Annemiek van Vleuten will get rid of Marta Bastianelli on the Paterberg. It's I've too short to get rid of Marta well, Bastianelli. I'm in agreement with you there, Jose. I think this race is all for Marta Bastianelli now. Annemiek van Vleuten will do everything she can to drop these riders on the Paterberg, but Marta Bastianelli is on a mission today. She is ridiculously strong today. And these other riders, Nieva Doma, Utrup Ludwig and uh, Van Vleuten, they are not sprinters. And of course, a sprint is not a sprint after 160 kilometers. But Marta Bastianelli is ridiculously strong. But look, look, that group is not too far behind, led by Chantal Black. Well, they'll definitely be uh, doing everything they possibly can back in the peloton there, or the small chasing group to get back. But to enemy Van Vluten now, she's really hurting Marta Bastinelli. Bastinelli knows she has to <laughs> dig so deep. Cecil Ludwig Utrup, she is a climber, so she may get over the Paderberg at the front, but she, will she be able to hold on 13 kilometers to the finish? These three riders, will they stay away to the finish? Here comes... The no, they're back. They're coming back. And, of course, this camera position is a little bit distorting. But they are coming back with uh, Chantal Black. Amy Peters is in this group. She might match Marta Bastianelli a little bit. And, uh, of course, we see Lisa Klein in the 13K flat. Because, Rochelle, it's a flat run into the finish line. There's still everything possible. The Kenyan tram rider may have been Kazi Nuodoma. We're calling as Elena Cecchini. So... We'll have to get a closer look there. but It's near Badoma. It's near Badoma. New Adoma is now in trouble. And they've just crested the Paderberg, the three leaders. So will they stay away on the 13-kilometer run into the finish of this year's Tour of Flanders? Cassie and New Adoma will be devastated to have lost that will. But the strength here of Chantel Black and Alan Van Dyke, they are two riders that could time trial their way back to that lead group. Sofia Bertizzolo is the Italian rider from the Virtue team, so that's going to be a very important teammate to Marta Bastianelli. What an impressive season so far for her, the young Italian. Another young Italian just uh, following wheels there is the Ali Cipollini rider, Soraya Paladin. Very, very fast descent, which is, uh, of course, uh, great for the skills of Marta Bastianelli and Annemiek van Vleuten. And you see that Cecil Ludwig has a little bit more trouble taking those corners little bit less courageous maybe yeah I think she'll play it a little bit safe here it would be her dream to be on the podium we'll see a very emotional uh, interview from uh, look at this group these three that were away I think they're gonna stay away all the way to the finish they've got every reason to work with each other and Amit Van Vluten won't want to take Master Bassanelli to the finish but if she doesn't work all the way to the line she knows that it could be uh, it's not over yet, Rochelle. It's not over yet. We've got Chantal Black and Ellen van Dijk in this group. Of course, Sofia Bertizzolo is Marta Bastianelli's teammate, and she's not going to help this chase any um, meter forward towards her team captain, Marta Bastianelli. She's going to sit on the wheel of Ellen van Dijk and Chantal Black, but there's still a lot to play. It's a 12, 13-kilometer flat run into the finish here in Sunny Audenade, the wind has picked up a little bit. If you look at the wind direction, Rochelle, what would you call it? It it's looks... To it's quite calm out there, I think. I don't think the wind is going to play a major factor in the finish of this race. These three riders will have all the interest in the world to continue. Smooth riding by Marta Bastianelli. Of course, she outmaneuvered the Dutch national team in Glasgow last year. Strategically, not the best race the Dutch riders ever had with uh, playing their cards for Lorena Vibes, who could not really finish it off. And uh, Mayana Vos pipping for second place. But Marta Bastianelli had a huge mental win there as well in her second career after her comeback, because she has been suspended for a while for a positive doping test. And she has come back into the peloton and now has got the best years of her life. She has been top 10, like I said before. 
uh, twice, but that was in 2007 and 2008. It looks like a century ago, but it was only 11 years. So that shows that Marta Bastianelli is back where she was uh, before. So and and she, it's, it's her race to lose. It's her race to lose. I don't think she's going to lose this race now. She will be booming with confidence. She knew her condition was good coming into this race, and the hard parts are done. She won't want to uh, lose this race now. She will probably contribute with Annemiek van Vluten and ride this to the finish. Just looking over her shoulder, an amazing athlete because she won her world championship as a skinny little climber. She went away. She had that couple of years that she was uh, suspended. Then she came back and she was not very, um, I don't think she was very prominent in the peloton. And then she went away and had a baby. And then she came back and she reinvented herself as a sprinter. But now as a sprinter, we see obviously this type of training that she's done. She's come back as a classics rider. and. Clearly, in the last few weeks, the strongest rider in the peloton. 28 seconds, 30 seconds for this group, led by Chantal Black, Ellen van Dijk, Kasia Nieva Dorman, Sofia Bertizzolo. And like I said before, this young Italian rider at the back of this group is not going to work in this breakaway to, uh, to catch the three leaders because she has her team captain up here. In the middle, at the lead, is Sicily Utrup Ludwig, like you have in Denmark. Two names one from dad and one from mum, but she usually goes by uh, the name of Sicily. Um, Annemiek van Vloot and Marta Bastianelli, two, well, let's say veteran riders, mid-30s, and one young up-and-coming rider. I think for Utrecht Ludwig, it will be fantastic if she finishes in third place. And Annemiek van Vloot has to come up with a plan now to get rid of this Italian which would be very, very difficult. But they've got uh, a bigger concern because with Ellen Van Dyke and Chantel Black Ooh. working together, <laughs> they are much stronger than this three combination. The two of them swapping off turns is a very dangerous uh, combination. So these three riders have to all give everything to keep those uh, riders chasing. We cannot have a situation in which Bastinelli and Van Vleuten are going to look at each other and to see who is going to make the first move because there are four riders here chasing, including uh, a former world champion in the time trial and a former world champion in the road race. Ellen van Dijk, Chantal Black and also Mira Doma is now uh, contributing to the chase and uh, Sofia Bertisolo is comfortably sitting on, as she should. Well, it's 19, 20 seconds with 9.8 kilometers to go. And the road opens up where the wind can play a part. And it is just picking up every now and then. So it'll be interesting that, like I said, the three out in front really need to keep working hard because these chasers here, specifically Chantel Black and Ellen Van Dyke, they won't stop. They will push 100% all the way to the finish. And, you know, Rochelle, after 150K of cobbles and bergs and everything even the slightest bit of headwind can can be a factor well Marta Bastinelli is the fastest sprinter of these three and uh, Van Blue. Yeah, she tries try, it she'll she try to do everything but Marta Bastinelli is just <laughs> too strong every attack that Van Vluten puts out there it's going to be Marta Bastinelli straight on the wheel she's a powerful rider she's a fast sprinter and Bastinelli will not want Ellen Van Dyke and Chantel Black to come back because then it's a numbers game for her she is faster than them in a sprint but if those attacks go one after another they come back Bastinelli could find herself <laughs> in a confusing position you saw that Marta Bastinelli was making that little uh, hand gesture to uh, uh, indicate that Van Vluten should take over and um, well, Van Vloot, she tried to take advantage of that little flyover, which is a little incline, and that's what she needs because she's not going to get rid of Bata Marta Bastinelli on the flat. And like we saw, she's not going to get rid of Marta Bastinelli on the little incline that we still have left. And these three riders, because I'm not counting Bertit Solo in this chase, they're not getting any closer. Well, I think that at some point, uh, Martin Vespi, the director of Mitchell and Scott back in the team car, will have to say to Annemiek van Vluten, look, the race has been won and lost already. Just ride to the finish to land a podium. She could still try another couple of attacks, but something drastic would have to happen for Marta Bastinelli to let this one go. So Mitchell and Scott find themselves in a position where they need to decide, do they just race for a podium now? Because if Annemiek stops contributing and starts playing cat and mouse, then she could find herself off the podium. Cecile... Utrip Ludwig, she will want to just ride this to get uh, on the podium as well. So they've all got interest in contributing, but they've got strong riders chasing them down in Chantel Black and Alan Van Dyke. Well, it is for sure that this is going to be the ninth top ten for Annemiek van Vloten in the Tour of Flanders. We're going to take you to the statistics 
tenth win in 2011 fifth fifth fourth seventh fourth and third well she hasn't got a second place yet but it's not what she came here to do to get second no she would have been dreaming of being that uh, third rider in history to have won two Rhonda van Vlanderens, and these are the riders chasing them down Kasia Neuadoma contributing as well you won't see the virtue rider contribute to this with her leader Marta Bastinelli that we saw out in front wearing the European jersey which is the white jersey she also holds the leader's jersey of the women's world tour which she's not wearing today and she's got world championship bands also on her sleeve a group with uh, Sophie de Faust, Amy Peters, Soraya Paladin and one Canyon Schramm rider with uh, number 53, that's uh, Lisa Klein, the German rider. So that is the third group in the race, and they are chasing now the Ellen Van Dijk and Chantal Black group. They're trying to get closer. Looks like another fantastic top 10 place for Sophie de Faust. And if you look it up on the internet, she had a gruesome, gruesome accident. She, uh, she got hit out on the bike by a truck, and uh, well, She's back, and that is the biggest win of her career, she said in a recent interview. And she has no more stress racing after that accident. And it's a fantastic, fantastic result also for the small Parkhotel Valkenburg team. But the winner seems to be in this group, and I see no other way than Marta Bastinelli winning this Tour of Flanders. Well, it looks like uh, all is playing in favor of Marta Bastinelli. She's come into the race with fine condition for the Virtue team, Carmen Small, the director, the big boss, Bjorn Reese, owner of the team, in the team car today, gives that extra motivation, and Marta Bassinelli certainly hasn't cracked under pressure. Well, I've never seen a suffer face on Annemie Convloten before, but this is the day. This is the day, and she knows she just has to ride as hard as she can to the finish just to be on the podium. And that would be difficult for a rider like Annemiek van Vluten, having won so many races, she won't like just pedaling and pushing for a podium position, but that's the situation that she's in. There is another, no other option at the moment for Annemiek van Vluten. And here's the chasing group who seem to be losing time, so good cooperation from the team leaders. Well, we got some nice atmosphere here at the finish line. Crowds are building up for the finish of the women's race in 6.2 kilometers. Um, they will be here at the finish line in Oudenaarde. Marta Bastinelli, she continues to look over her shoulder. She knows she needs to work hard. And even if she does empty the tank, she still has a better kick than the other two riders. So Marta Bastinelli will contribute. But as we said, she's looked to be the strongest rider in the peloton in the last couple of races, especially in Ghent Wevelgum, pushing the pace on the climbs. But so she, she, got, she got boxed in in the sprint in the punter, and she couldn't ride her full potential sprint in uh, Ghent Wevelgum last week. So maybe that's why she thinks, I'm just going to split this on the climbs, because I know that I'm one of the fastest and one of the strongest in this race. And the frustrating thing for this group, led by Chantal Black, Ellen van Dijk, is that they can see the riders, they can see the motorbikes chasing those three leaders, but they're not getting any, any closer. Five kilometers to go for the leaders, Annemiek van Vluten, Marta Bastinelli and Cecile Jutrup Ludwig. And interestingly, Bowles Dolmans, they still haven't won a World Tour race this year. Trek Segafredo, one of the big teams on the start list, also not looking to uh, pick up a victory here at the 2019 Tour of Flanders. Well, I can say that the GPS is accurate. We are at 27 seconds, even a little bit more. It's 29. So this is going to be a mission impossible for Chantal Black, Ellen van Dijk, Kasia Nieva-Doma, Sofia Bertizolo. Our winner is um, in the first group. And um, if Marta Bastianelli's bike stays at one piece, because Rochelle, to be quite frank, that's the only way she can lose this race. Annemiek van Vloten has to come up with a plan, but she has no ground left. She has no hills left to attack Bastianelli. Well, with just over four kilometers to go, this looks like a given for Marta Bastianelli. She will be excited, and then the race will be on for second between the two riders of Annemiek van Vluten and Cecile Jutrup Ludwig. That's a mouthful, that name, but... <laughs> but just call her Sicily. Sicily. And you know, remember last year's La Course, where Annemiek van Vluten seems to be beaten by Anna van der Breggen, but she came back in those 15 meters, or five meters, or 10, or whatever it was, 
back to the finish line to beat Anna van der Brugge. That is a possible scenario today, but the road into Oudenaarde here is flat as a pancake, so it's going to be incredibly difficult. But we're already calling Marta Bastianelli the winner of today's race, but we still got four kilometers left to race. So a race is not won unless you cross the finish line. Well, I'm sure we're going to see some attacks and moves from the other two riders because they won't want to just ride in with Marta Bastinelli, but she's proven to be so strong that my guess is with the power that she has in her sprint, she can just jump onto the wheels. But as you said, it uh, mainly comes down to the mechanics of her bike at this point in the race. We're going to see an Italian winner with 3.6 kilometers to go. It is Marta Bastinelli. Cecilia Utrip Ludwig and Annemiek Van Vluten of Mitchelton Scott. Marta Bastinelli is going to be, uh, if she wins this race, the second Italian winner of the Tour of Flanders in 2015, Elisa Longo Borghini. And uh, if you look at the Danish, uh, Cecilia Ludwig, she's going to be the first Danish winner if she wins it. And of course, Annemiek Van Vluten comes in a long line of Dutch winners. She herself won it in 2011, 2005, and six. A Dutch winner in 2013, a Dutch winner in 2014 and 2018 but she has one rider that she cannot beat how frustrating is this for Annemiek van Vloten? very frustrating after all the victories that she's had in her career knowing that she's in a position where she can she can only race for a podium winning seems like a very hard task just a quick word to Cecile there as she passes by. They need to try and one to Marta Bastinelli, but I think she's going to be too strong. Under three kilometers to go now for the chasing group. If you look at the results of Marta Bastinelli this year, she won uh, the Spar Omloop van het Hageland of 1.1 race. She was fourth in Strade Bianchi, third in the Acht van Westerveld, first, of course, in Tour of Drenthe, seventh in the Panne, fourth in Gent Bevergem, and second last Wednesday when she won the sprint of the peloton uh, that was chasing Ellen van Dijk. So she has had a magnificent run this year and she hasn't finished outside of the top 10 this 2019 season. Well, we just see the two riders there putting pressure. Here goes Annemiek van Vluten, but Marta Bastinelli, she has a powerful kick straight onto the wheel. We knew that was going to happen. Annemiek van Vluten has to have a go and maybe Cecil Ludwig Uthrup, she'll kick over the top if she can, but Marta Bastinelli, she is going to cover every single move here in the last two kilometers because she knows this is her chance to win Ronda Van Blander, and it is going to be an amazing victory, but they can't let the pressure off the pedals because they've got breathing down their necks, the strong riders of Alan Van Dyke and Chantel Black chasing them down, and is coming down the gap 18 seconds with 1.9 kilometers to go. They cannot 15. go and watch each other and play a tactical game of cat and mouse because the gap is not that big anymore. Marta Bastinelli, she is a former world champion. She won the race in Stuttgart when she was only 20 years young and she beat Mariana Vos and Giorgia Bronzini and um, that was, um, well, 12 years ago. This is coming down very, very quickly. So Marta Bastinelli... Ah, this is playing the tactical game, uh, Rochelle, and this is something that they cannot do, do. Well, Cecile Lubick YouTube, she's the one that has to put the pressure down because if they get caught, she won't end up on the podium. Annemiek Van Vluten also playing with a podium position here. Here comes Chantel Black and Ellen Van Dyke. They are closing in very quickly. It looks like they're going to catch them. This is oh. amazing. It's going to be a very, very close finish. Well, maybe Sofia Bartizolo is going to be the winner of this race. She hasn't done anything in this chase. She just set on in fourth wheel. And of course, well, they now know, they know that the others are coming. We're going into the kite of the last kilometer. And they know that the chasers are coming closer. Ellen van Dijk, Chantal Black, Kasia Nieva-Doma, Sofia Bertizzolo, Cecily Ludwig taking the lead, Marta Bastianelli in second place, Annemiek van Vleuten in third. Are they going to be caught or not? Give us a bit of a wide helicopter shot at the moment. We want to know what the gap is. Is there still a chance for Chantal Black to win this Tour of Flanders? Or is Marta Bastianelli just too strong? She goes to the lead of this group, 750 meters. What is the gap? It 
it looks too big for Shell. It looks too yeah, big. it looks too big. And Marta Bassinelli is being pressured to the front. Can she win after leading out the last one kilometer? This is the position that she had to put be put in. But Annemiek Van Vluten definitely going to kick. Marta Bassinelli just leaves the pressure off the pedals for a second. Here goes Annemiek Van Vluten. Final. Cecil, and I think Bastinelli's got this wrapped up. She's going to close that down. She is a handy sprinter. I think well, she's going to have this one. But a strong move from Annemiek Van Vluten. Van Vluten just tries to keep that pace. And Marta Bastinelli seems to have trouble closing the gap. But of course, she has the advantage of being on the wheel. It's only a few hundred meters, and she's got this wrapped up. Marta Bastianelli is going to be the second Italian winner of this Tour of Flanders. She's got it. She's got it. Marta Bastianelli wins ahead of Annemiek van Vleuten, and Sicily Utrup Ludwig is fourth. Then Sofia Bertizzolo cheering, Ellen van Dijk, Kasia Nevadoma, and... Chantal Black, we've Ooh. got seven riders in and an almost crash behind the finish line. But Marta Bastinelli, she could not lose this race and she did not lose this race. Well, she did everything she had to do with one kilometer to go. She was forced to the front and she had to apply the pressure. And that set Annemiek Van Vluten up. And Annemiek Van Vluten did a really good job to give herself every single opportunity. But there is Marta Bastinelli. A very deserving winner of today's Ronda Van Vlander. And here comes the peloton in for the sprint now. Lisa Clyde with Lisa Brennauer and Amy Peters going for the top ten on the right side of the road. But Lisa Brennauer is going to out-sprint her. It's, I think, Floortje Mackay. Uh, no, Lucinda Brandt, Lisa Brennauer, Amy Peters is there. But uh, it's a win for Virtue. It's their second win in the World Tour. The second win for Marta Bastianelli. What a run in by this Italian rider. And yeah, Van Floten, she, she did it. There was, she there was just a slight chance she could win this race. And that was by attacking on Paterberg and getting rid of Barta Bastianelli, doing a 13K time trial to the finish line. But Barta, Marta Bastianelli, just like she was on the Camelberg last week, was just dominant. She's been dominant for a long time now. She's been on top form all the way from Strada Bianchi. She held the World Tour leader's jersey going into today's race, and she's extended her lead. We see a very emotional victory there. Here's Mitchelton Scott. They did a three, fantastic race. Three fantastic riders, a fantastic race. They Here's come. Voss. Here's Voss. She, um, of course, had the mechanical. Um, I don't think it would have made a big difference, but uh, she had a mechanical, very untimely moment. And uh, that kind of uh, crushed the chances for Mayana Voss. There were only two top ten places for Marta Bastianelli in this race, and that was back in 2007 and 2008. And she was 13th last year, and now she won it. And like you said earlier on today, this is the grand prize just alongside the Olympic Championships, uh, the Olympic Games, and the World Championships for pro riders. And this is the move that Annemiek van Vleuten had to do, and she also knew that she had a slim chance of winning it. But if you do not try it, you will not win it. She had to have a go. We knew it was coming. She knew that's all that she could do, and she also knew Marta Bassinelli would be coming. I think Marta Bassinelli stayed quite calm here. A very long sprint. She just sits on the wheel for a second. She knows the power that she has. She can come off in, you know, 40 or 50 metres, and now she kicks with her explosiveness. Tired legs, though. And Annemiek Van Vluten always pushes it all the way to the line. So a very well-deserved winner in Marta Bastinelli, but a great effort from Annemiek Van Vluten. And we will hear a very emotional interview from Cecile Ludwig Utrecht because she will be ecstatic with her third place here at Ronde van Vlaanderen. Massive result for the youngster. Well, if you look at the results from uh, Marta Bastinelli this year, well, she's done 10 race days. She's won three of them and she's been on the podium uh, on three other occasions. Like I said, she hasn't finished outside the top eight this year. It's a, it's a remarkable, remarkable season for Marta Bastianelli. And if you look at last year, um, well, she won a lot of races last year, of course, as well. So she is a force to be reckoned with, and she is still only 31. Yeah, she's had a very long career and some great results, but she said even though she's won the World Championship, this is one of the most important or the most important victory for her to win Tour of Flanders. Nothing else compares to this race. You have to have luck on your side. You need to have the condition of your life. You need to have a strong team, which she had today, and she also had the additional motivation of Bjorn Reis, the team owner, being at dinner last night and in the team car today. 
This is the result of the Tour of Flanders 2019. Marta Bastianelli wins it for Team Virtue. Annemiek van Vleuten, Cicely Troep, Ludwig, Sofia Bertizolo, Ellen van Dijk, Kasia Nierwadoma, Chantal Blaak, Lisa Brennauer, Lucinda Brandt and Amy Peters rounds up the top 10 for today. An Italian winner, just like we had in 2015 with Elisa Longo Borghini. And of course, she extends her lead in the Women's World Tour, having won this race 200 points for her and her two closest rivals, Kirsten Wild and uh, Marianne Vos. They were way, way back. And uh, in the case of Kirsten Wild, even outside of the points. So she extends her lead in the World Tour. And with this form, who knows what she can do in Amstel Gold Race in two weeks' time. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not sure that the uh, World Tour would have been on her radar last year coming into the season, but she certainly has a good chance. There's so much more racing to go in the Women's World Tour, but next up, the Ardennes Classics. And if she continues her form, she's been on top form for quite some weeks now, but if she can carry that form into the Ardennes Classics, she may well see a handy lead going into the second part of the season. Well, confirmation that uh, Marta Bastianelli considerably extends her lead in the UCI Women's World Tour. Annemiek van Vleuten jumps to third place having finished second today and having won a trophy uh, uh strada bianca of course making 350 points um the first race in the women's world tour is going to be in two weeks time the amstel gold race when we start the ardennes but of course the racing continues next wednesday in the netherlands and the uh, healthy aging tour a five-day stage race it's uh, i think it's only the second stage race third stage race of the year after the uh, tour d'ananda and uh, valencia well, the replay of the sprint there, Annemiek van Vluten of Mitchell and Scott, she did everything she could possibly do given the situation. Marta Bastinelli, way too strong today for the Ronda van Vlander, and she knew that she was capable of winning it coming into the last couple of weeks. Great form, and really used all of the pressure building to her advantage today. She didn't put a foot wrong. She was sensational. We're on the market square of Audenade, where the team buses for the men's team already lined up. Of course, there's another race to finish here um, in about, I think, two hours' time. Yeah, a little bit less than two hours' time. But we've seen a great Tour of Flanders. What's your highlight of today? Well, I think on the old Aquamont, when uh, Marta Bastinelli really applied some pressure and uh, Mariana Voss was able to hold the wheel, obviously the down part of the day was the puncher from Mariana Voss. It may have changed the dynamics a little bit, but Marta Bastinelli is still the favourite um, in terms of strength out there today, and uh, she stayed really calm. So the old Aquamont, the Paderberg as well. I think the longer distance made the race a little bit more neutralized in the early section, knowing that it was such a long race and that the women are not so used to racing over 160 or 170 kilometers that uh, it kind of kept the start of the race a little bit neutralized. So longer is not always better, Rochelle. <clears throat> okay, we're going to watch the highlights here with, uh, well, this is not a highlight, of course, this is a low light with the crash of uh, Amelia Sik uh, and the crash which uh, made that Corin Rivera, former winner here, had to abandon. This was the triple Bulls Dolmens crash of the day with uh, Jip van der Bos, Amelie Diederikse and Chantal Black. Jip van der Bos is the rider on the deck here. She had to abandon the race. We had uh, some great climbs here. Of course, the Muur van Gerardsbergen alongside the chapel. We're doing the entire Muur. Great attack here by Cicely Utrup Ludwig. And this is what made the race and it is exactly this point where Mayanna Voss had a flat so I think Mayanna Voss would have ended up on the podium I don't think she would have bit Marta Bastianelli in a sprint but um, Voss would have been part of that free woman breakaway for sure because she just missed out um, on the attack she had a flat and that was the ins the only reason that she missed out on this group. This was the only chance that Annemiek van Vleuten had to get rid of uh, Marta Bastinelli, and she didn't succeed, so Marta Bastinelli did everything right. And just like Rochelle said, there were, well, no regrets when it comes to racing for Annemiek van Vleuten. There was nothing else she could have done. There was only one woman stronger today, and her name is Marta Bastianelli. 31 years of age, former world champion and the absolute revelation of this year's season well you can see they had tired legs in the sprint and they did go very early marta bastinelli was forced to the front with a kilometer to go so not a usual explosive kick but uh, definitely the strongest rider in the race today so a well deserved victory for marta bastinelli well thank you so much for watching this very very exciting race 
in the Tour of Flanders. Wherever you were watching, I saw many people from all over the world, America, Australia, the Netherlands, Belgium. So uh, thank you very much for tuning in um, to this race. It's, it's fantastic to be able to show so much exciting women's racing everywhere. And uh, your next appointment uh, in the World Tour will be in the south of the Netherlands, the Amstel Gold Race. And um, I'm looking forward to that one already. It's always a very exciting race to watch with many different scenarios to be played. There was no stopping Marta Bastianelli, that's for sure. I only wonder, I still wonder why she did not wear that jersey. Yeah, it's a little bit of a mystery. The World Tour leader's jersey is a, uh, a magenta co color and uh, we expected to see Marta Bastianelli in that jersey today. But uh, it's been a fantastic day, Jose. Thank you very much, Rochelle. Hope to see you soon and uh, keep watching uh, this fantastic women's racing. Thank you.